All right, well, it seems to be working. Okay, uh, here we go. Right. Uh, hi, everyone. Frankie here at New West Reset. Welcome back, and thanks for shooting in to join me here once again. Something a little different. This is kind of a, a nice little chill chat, a nice little sit back and relax and uh, chew the fat, kind of a live stream, but we're pre-recording this so that I can kind of really sit down and chat with and get to know my new friend from Old World Exploration. So welcome, Old World. How are you doing? Hey, Frankie. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you very much for accepting the invitation, which, as I mentioned earlier before we uh, hit record here, that it was actually me responding to your invitation for anybody who wanted to get together and chat. So I think this is great. This is a great thing for the community. And uh, again, thank you very much. Yeah, I think it's so important for us to uh, share our thoughts, right? Yeah, yeah. And it helps to kind of give a broader perspective on a lot of these things, because as you very well are aware, there's so many offshoots of different rabbit holes in this overall sort of community, what sort of Tartaria community, mud flood community, uh, that, you know, it's really, really easy to kind of go down different avenues and explore new things. And if there's other people in the community that maybe that's their strong point or their wheelhouse, it's kind of cool to get together and kind of pick that person's brain a little bit, right? Uh, definitely. Yeah. Everyone has a, a, a sort of a, an interest in this, but you can't be, you can't dig at all. Like no shovels. No one has a shovel that big. There's too much to dig. Yeah. <laughs> <I> <laughs> like you know, you go that. with what you like and then you just yeah. dive. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's, I mean, you don't want to get too laser focused because, you know, a, a guy will go insane, but <laughs> you know, having a sort of an area of expertise is cool. And you and I kind of come at it sort of similarly in the fact that we're both a couple of, Canadians, a couple of crazy Canucks, eh? <laughs> yeah, you bet. So um, we a have... Little, a little tragically hip going earlier this evening. Sorry to just throw oh, a yeah, Canadian plug sure. out. <laughs> yeah, you got to do that. Hey, yeah. you know, the band I use for my all my uh, all my uh, video uploads is uh, Big Sugar. So. Oh, I know. I, I've, I saw them live many years ago. <laughs> that was the loudest show I've ever seen, by the way, is Big Sugar. Yeah. I saw them live, too. Yeah, they're fantastic. Uh, they were louder than Motley Crue, wow. <laughs> which wow. which is mind bottling. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. but uh, yeah, you know, having this Canadian perspective, uh, and I think, and we were talking about this earlier too. It kind of we we come at it from a small town perspective, but also a big city perspective because there's a lot of both in Canada. We don't have too too much of the urban sprawl, but we have enough where we can do deep dives on quite big cities that are by the narrative older cities. But then we also have those secluded, tiny little mining towns or desert ghost towns or little secluded mountain towns that haven't really changed much since the Victorian era or the Edwardian era or even the Georgian period, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's well, there's a few. There's one called Phoenix, I think, in, in BC. And it's a ridiculous story there. It's a ghost town now. I think it's down in the Kootenays. And uh, mm -hmm. I think it had 25 hotels at one point. Like you, it's see, just, you dig these things up and it's like it's disbelief, right? It almost takes over. Yeah. How does this tiny little town in the middle of nowhere in the mountains uh, end up with 25 hotels in it, right? And sure, you know, they may have only been, you know, wooden A-frame, two-story, maybe eight rooms in it. And mainly it was mostly to have a saloon probably or whatever. But maybe. even still... You know, let's say 10 rooms, 25 hotels, that's almost 300 rooms for some town that probably had, what, 200, yeah. 300, 400, 500 people, maybe? Just miners, right? It was a mining town. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It just feels like we're not getting a full story, you know? That's how. That's why I do what I'm doing right now. It just. Yeah. Let me uh, kind of pick your brain on that a little bit, if you don't mind. How did you sort of get into the whole thing? Um, I really sort of, what, what started with me were things like, uh, um, it was probably about a year and a half ago, um, started looking at pictures of places like Petra and Jordan. Turkey's mm -hmm. got all that weird, weird stuff going on there. And they're kind of, mm -hmm. those are mind benders, those, uh, those pictures. Cause once you start to sort of flip, flip the historical narrative on that, it's, it doesn't make sense. And then I, I sort of kept going down that road, but then I started looking at 
more what we might call what we might call recent stuff like towns in north america and then all this brick and you get into the whole mud flood thing and you start to see the buried windows and start watching john levi then yes. john john levi <laughs> yeah, yeah shout out to to right. papa john yeah absolutely yeah it's uh those they're really it, it, it like opens up your mind like you can almost feel your mind opening as you're watching a lot of these videos if you allow it right as you're watching it yeah and, uh, yeah and it really inspired me and then i just as, as sort of a you know some people will play a solitaire as sort of a de-stressor after the day mm -hmm. um i started just looking for these old buildings these pictures of these old buildings and then creating files and then dumping them in the files and then uh had a big mess of uh, files of places all over the world and i realized okay well maybe i'm going to narrow down my search and i'm going to make a file of this city and start looking for in particular places instead of just everywhere you know yeah because again it gets back to you can get too too laser focused and lose your marbles right a guy can go nuts because there is really so much out there yeah. and yeah. again it's realm wide it's everywhere it's mm -hmm. everywhere from New Zealand to Japan to Paris to uh, Toronto uh, yeah. to Mexico. You know, like it's just like you yeah. name it. There's something odd that like you put so eloquently just doesn't suit the narrative, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, I started uh, changing the way I searched, um, realizing, you know, how we have these search engines the big G Google <laughs> yes. long gone. That's long gone out of my world at this point. Google's not, not something I would ever use, but, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the search engines, they produce different results. So I started doing things like, uh, uh searching for, uh, these buildings in different languages. I'd use the translator and then I put my search in, in a different language. And it was amazing. The different type visuals huh. that came up and how much no more kidding. came up. Yeah. It was a, a produced quite a bit quite good results in certain areas for sure yeah and then also postcard i started using the postcard uh, search and there's a lot of postcards out there and what i i use this story a lot for people yeah. when i try to explain what's going on right now with uh, this research mm -hmm. it's like so our whole lives we were you know parked in front of the box and we had these information sources like newspapers um and what else did we have schools newspapers um, and now we're in the internet age where somebody can go up into granny's uh, postcard box up in the attic and with their iPhone and pull out these postcards of these probably building streets that no one's ever seen before because there's only a handful of postcards that exist in the world. But really? there they are. And then they put them online on their Facebook and all of a sudden now I can search for them on a DuckDuckGo or whatever. Yes, so we're in this yeah. like uh, flowering of, of uh, volume of information is how I see it. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And I find that the, there, there is, there's a lot of upsides to that. You, and you, you're right, you got to be really creative in how you search. And I truly try to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, because I on my channel, I don't do just the boots on the ground. I like to, first you of all, I have a, videos. Yeah, I find some old videos and mostly old steam locomotive trains, because mm -hmm. I grew up around trains, I have a deep family history with the uh, CP railroad. So for Can me, I... trains are in my blood. So I try to find old trains specifically, but also try to find just old stuff that relates to Canada, maybe stuff in Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver. If I can find old footage for Calgary, great. That's the uh -huh. best. Yeah. 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 Well, what's your take on that uh, the historical narrative of uh, steam trains and uh, tracks and trains in general? What, what, how do you see that? well that that's the thing with when i say my family history goes deep with cp rail that's for those of you who don't know that's canadian pacific railway in canada we had two national railways we had canadian pacific railway and canadian national railway that's cn rail mm -hmm. but my great grandfather worked for cp rail out of montreal my grandfather his his son worked a little bit for about only for about 15 years for cp rail uh, this is out of the main rail yards in Montreal. Uh -huh. uh, then I had a couple of my grandfather's brothers, a couple of my great uncles, uh, two of them actually worked for CP as well. And right. then I had uh, three uncles, three of my dad's brothers <laughs> worked for CP. And I, to this day, still have one cousin who I'm 52 and he's five years younger than me. 
he works for CP Rail as well. So the whole going back all the way back to my great grandfather working for CP in the 20s and 30s, it was never building the railroad. It was always just as if the the infrastructure of the railroad was there, even in mm-hmm. the 20s. And I know the 20s isn't even close to when the railroads were told were started here, you know, sort of like the 1860s, 1880s yeah. here in Canada, uh, a little earlier in England. But anyway, yep. it, there was never stories, because that would have only been, let's say, 40 years later. There was never really a lot of stories of building railroads or or even building track to extend different lines going into different towns or cities it was it was always just the stories that i heard as a kid growing up was just the day-to-day work that they did for the railroad whether they were switchmen or brakemen or whether they did do some track maintenance it was never the building it was always just maintenance so i i kind of subscribe to the idea that a lot of what we see that we're taught were sort of victorian era inventions like this the steam locomotive engine like trains and other steam driven engines mm-hmm. as well as the electric streetcars or even the cable or belt driven streetcars yeah I, I think that's old tech that was found yeah. and that some of us back then were at least smart enough to be able to reverse engineer it enough to figure out how to use it mm-hmm. how to how to repair it how to get it going yeah. uh, but they had to sort of macgyver it or jerry rig it uh, because they couldn't figure out everything. So they had to use some of technology of the day and sort of splice it in or hack it into the pre-existing old world tech that they uncovered or they found. Yeah, and uh, they started pulling them with horses in some of the cities, right? The uh, Yeah, the, initially the street trolleys were pulled by, yeah, horse, exactly. Yeah, That, yeah, one, yeah. that one makes me laugh too, because that's... Uh, um, that's part of our historical narrative is that these were first built to be pulled by horses. Mm-hmm. So you're telling me that a horse is going to, it, this is all meant to stay on the track and the horse is just supposed to stay on track basically and pull this on, on a track. It doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Why because you, you still have the guy who's driving the team yeah. of horses. So you yeah. still have reins so to to guide the horses, but horses are unpredictable compared exactly. to an electric engine, right? Exactly. Electric engine, you, you could always have a dead man switch that you pull and it just shuts everything down in case of an emergency or whatever. A horse, yeah. a, a team of four horses pulling a, you know, a two ton trolley with uh, 50 people in it. It's not so easy if a horse decides to get cantankerous or ornery. Trust me, I live in Calgary, Alberta now. <laughs> it's uh, I know it, a thing or two about horses now. It doesn't make sense. It's it's so ridiculous. It's like once you see it, you cannot see it. It's like, okay, yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to call them on that. Whoever wrote that in this area, narrative, I'm going to call you on that because it makes no sense to me. It just doesn't jive with logic. I think logic's a big one here, what we're using. Um, in this research, right? We're yeah, I mean, it's basic logic, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's the simplest explanation. You don't have to get too complicated with it, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, obviously, there was some kind of catastrophe. And, and I'm of the opinion myself that depending where you were geographically and depending on what uh, cataclysm we're talking about, because I think that there were a number of them that go back further and further, and they could almost be, for lack of a better term, called cyclical or they come in cycles maybe sure, but anyway yeah. depending where you where you are depends on the type of result from this cataclysm uh you know uh, yeah. some places got mud flooded some places maybe it was volcanoes other places it was extreme heat or some kind of i don't know plasma blast uh-huh. because while i don't see evidence of what looked like old really really old ancient melted buildings here around calgary uh-huh. But the stuff that I'm seeing on other channels that do boots on the ground in some desert region that looks like it was blasted with some kind of extreme heat. Yeah, some of those do look like melted buildings, not yeah. these big giant mountains that are 11,000 feet high, <laughs> but stuff that's, you know, a few hundred feet tall and has clearly got what look like levels and arches or columns that have almost been 
not only scorched but melted and scorched like candle wax sort yeah. of yeah. kind of i don't know hard to and explain there's, well, even on these uh what we would call these old buildings in uh in many of these cities in north america even they have a scorching as well there's a blackening yeah. mm -hmm. you know um and then uh, i think we we are attributing that to what rain over 120 years or i think that rain and weather over 120 years where it really looks more like a, a scorching like something something scorched the outside of these some of these old churches and city halls or whatever whatever it might be you know yeah from what i've and i don't i don't i haven't seen that here in calgary either which is why i think with calgary is kind of in a bowl much like yeah. what you were saying where you are is, is in a valley you're in a valley yeah. and there's i mean some of those tall mountains that i just alluded to you live amongst some yeah. of those t quite tall mountains that's right yeah so and that's calgary's the same but not quite to that extreme level in terms of altitude of the the surrounding region it's mm -hmm. more the rolling foothills and calgary's kind of down in a river valley bowl and yeah. whether you go due east west north or south you have to go up an incline and then calgary is down in the bottom of this bowl so i think for specifically for what i'm seeing here in calgary it is some kind of landslide or mud flood was uh -huh. the result of this catastrophe because everything would have slid down the surrounding hills which aren't that far you know a few hundred yards here a few thousand yards there maybe a kilometer or a mile or two in each direction so it's yeah. not like it's flowing for hundreds of miles either well you have and a couple interesting evidence of erosion too right so yeah what well, you have near near you you have banff which has the uh, the uh, train uh, hotel the hotel part oh, of the yeah, uh, that cpr Coast hotel yeah that thing's crazy yeah. and you also have the drumheller um area um which i don't know there's meltage i think meltiness going on there if you want to call it yeah that. if i was going to say that scorched like for example getting back to john levi and the stuff that he shows in utah where it's all yeah. scorched and 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 bleached and ravaged by obviously some kind of extreme temperature yeah maybe in conjunction with something else maybe plasma or something too who knows right but yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's areas here in Alberta where we have that too. Yeah, we have that Drumheller area, what's called the Badlands, which is basically a high desert. Uh -huh. And it's extremely dry, extremely arid. And where we have what's called the Hoodoos, it's kind of like what you see in the yeah. old Roadrunner or Coyote cartoons there. Mm -hmm. I know the Hoodoos. We have yeah. those. Yeah, we have those. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of that stuff looks really scorched, melted, and really ancient. Yeah, and for I think sure. it. It leads right down into, I think, uh, what is it? The Missouri River breaks down in Montana, I think, sort of. Yeah, it's that whole coulee system that goes uh, from Drumheller and then it kind of goes south eastward through um, the sort of the Medicine Hat Dinosaur Provincial Park area. Which yeah, which geographically uh, looks very similar to Drumheller. And then it keeps I've, going down into Montana and then I think further down as well. Yeah, I've actually looked at Medicine Hat before too. It's got some old buildings in there too. Some some old world going on at Medicine Hat. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's where a lot of the brick was made for Alberta. Initially, was Medicine Hat. Is that what they say? It's interesting. Yeah, the red the red brick. Um, yeah. They also say I just recently found out that um, through trying to really really wrap my brain around the idea of where all the red brick, especially here in southern Alberta, came from, mm -hmm. because through initially the research that I was doing, there were no brick factories in Calgary. There were just sandstone quarries and sandstone factories or plants that would uh, sort of uh, process these big sandstone blocks. Yeah. And this was again in the you know 1880s through to about the 1920s ish. Mm. But from what I initially could find, nothing about red brick. It's certainly not kiln fired red brick you know maybe yeah. pressed you know dry brick but yeah. nothing nothing yeah. but then i was talking to uh do you know bernie conklin Bernie, the guy oh, yeah. who's on campbell's uh, i know a lot yeah, yeah. i know yeah. he's here in calgary so i was talking to him yeah and he was asking me if i've ever heard of this brick factory in this big park along the river just maybe a 20 minute walk from where i live and I said, well, I've heard of it, but as far as I've looked into it and I've just haven't, I, there's no evidence that there's even a building where they say there was. Yeah. 
so who knows right so he and i are going to get together and do boots on the ground and we're going to kind of i've got one of those collapsible military style shovels that you can put in a backpack yep i'm going to bring that with me technically you're not supposed to do that down there but <laughs> i'm going to be a little bit sneaky and see if we can find something and i kind of looked i had a time on google earth google maps there and yep. i did find a couple of spots that potentially look like the remains of old buildings uh -huh. kind of off the beaten path but in that general area of where it was supposed to be yeah but have not confirmed it yet that there was a brick factory here in calgary so when i see literally hundreds of buildings built between you know 1890 and 1920 ish all yeah. over you know sort of the downtown core and some of the older neighborhoods then mm -hmm. I wonder where do these bricks come from? And yeah. I'd asked around and a lot of people had said medicine hat. And I, at first I was like, Duh, okay. Yeah. But then I realized, well, the dates of some of these brick buildings, even by their own narrative, predate when the railroad was connected from Edmonton to Calgary. So definitely no railroad from medicine hat to Calgary if Calgary didn't even join up with the provincial capital yet. Yeah. I think it wasn't. In, yeah, I think it wasn't until it, it was 1886 when the railroad came to Calgary. Yeah, well, I got a couple old ones of uh, Medicine Hat while we're chatting. I'm just doing a search here. Uh huh. Should we throw throw a couple of them up or? or? Sure, if you want. Yeah, go right ahead. Yeah, I think you should yeah. be able to screen share. Well, there. Let me see. So I just share a screen. Yeah, you just click on share and then there'll be a little pop-up and then it actually gives you the option of if you want to share a tab or if you're sharing a, an app or if you're sharing a video. Oh, yeah. All right, I'll just uh, try it. I see what you're saying. All right, can you see this? Uh, I'm going to click on at the stream. There we go. Oh yeah, there we are. Yep. All right. This I just is me just doing a search on, on the fly here, but mm -hmm. medicine hat, right? Get some. Yeah. I, right. Yeah. <laughs> got, That's got the, the high old, school. This is the old west down here. This is what I picture as the old west. This yeah. is Boston, in you know, <laughs> or you yeah. know, something. It just. St. Louis, just, Toronto, uh, Boston, right? it's, Philly. Yeah. Yeah. Big cities out out east. Hey, look at this. What? Cannot school medicine hat. Maybe the same one, is it? Maybe. No, it's not the same one. No, no, that one looks more like it has a gingerbread kind of a yeah, colorized. So it's it. so it's not just brick or maybe they're blending the brick and the sandstone here, but they always have the little little details on top too, right? Oh yeah, they got silly with brick down in medicine hat because they couldn't swing a dead cat without finding brick down there, right? So it was really easy for them. <laughs> Whereas the narrative up here was, nope, there was no brick. That's why it's all sandstone. And now I come to find out, no, potentially there was brick up here. And I'm like, wait yeah. a sec. It's one <laughs> or the other. It's one or the other. Somebody's, somebody's feeble well, little worship. When we, when we look back to, and when you talk to somebody and they, they swear they know exactly the story, mm -hmm. they're just regurgitating a story. Yeah. Right. It's and you can't just you can't say you know. You you can say that this is what you were told or this is what you read, but you can't say you know. I, and that's how I look at that. If, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. Let's just leave it open a little bit. You know. That one's a beauty, by the way. That last one you just showed. That was a beauty. Yeah. What are they calling it? The city hall. The city hall. Of course. Got this up here. Why yeah, wouldn't you do this nice here? Dome. You gotta have a nice dome there in Medicine Hat. By the way, Medicine Hat. Uh, I think the narrative on that is cattle ranches later on oil uh oh, yeah. because there's really not much else going on around medicine hat except for maybe some cattle ranching farming train stop but... is it a train stop must well, eventually be. yeah i think yeah. a train stop probably into the u.s because it's quite far south of calgary okay yeah yeah i've never been that out that far so it's southeast of calgary it's like yeah. a two-hour drive ish give or take look at the street light here too hey eh? isn't that yeah. beauty yeah they just this is then that's another thing that gets me about the old world it's like it wasn't just like let's quickly tack this cylinder together and put a light under it it was like you gotta have frills you gotta have gotta have a little detail you gotta have the little ball on top and it's got to be proportional and 
you know? Oh, yeah, that's the crazy thing about the old world is everything had to have some kind of little doodad or thingamajig or yeah, it's oozing art thing on the top of it. It's beautiful. Art and beauty, it's oozing it, you know? It's, and that's why I think that's where when you see it, you see it. And once you, yeah. once you know what it is, it's like, yeah, old world. Yeah, yeah. And that, I think it was a combination of form and function, too. I think a lot, not everything, not every statue or little bobule, I think, had some kind of tech or functionality to it. Mm-hmm. But I think some of them did, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I mean, I when you, you see a building with like fifteen, what we're being told are flagpoles on it, but only one has a f- flag on it. These yeah. old buildings in Canada would have the old Union Jack on them, right? The old <laughs> British flag before yeah. we got our own flag. Yeah. And then the rest of them, I mean, they look like and and t- antenna towers or something. But it's like the date on the photo is 1871, and you're like, well, wait a sec. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Look let me check you. the history book. Yeah, the old post office, eh? That's not brick. That's uh, that must be the sandstone. You think? That's sandstone, and then I think the inlay is probably brick, like around the windows and stuff. Yeah. But see, if you need something fancy like that for a bunch of cowboys and cattle ranchers and and, and grain farmers. And then you see this. Out in the that, middle of the prairies. Excavation. Yeah. That that means excavation happened. Mm. Deep excavation. Every time I see a basement window, I know they went down. <laughs> and I know what it takes to dig a hole with with backhoes and excavators. Not, not to mention, what are we talking in this area? Maybe steam shovels. I've heard steam shovels brought up as the explanation for that. Well, there were steam shovels, but yeah. I mean, they didn't go back to. Uh, I think the steam shovels were around the 18, 1870s, I want to say. Don't quote me on that, but. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's not like every little town like this. Like people have to understand where Medicine Hat is. Medicine Hat is southeastern Alberta. We, it's, uh, it's like a mile's drive from anywhere else. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up so people can see. And probably... uh, it's like two miles from Calgary, two miles from the American border. It's out in the middle of scrub brush, bald ass prairie in Alberta. <laughs> the okay. only thing it's notable for is head smashed in buffalo junk because there is a cliff there or a plateau that drops off into a steep cliff face that the indigenous first nations used to herd some buffalo over so that they could obviously you know what did you call it buffalo what did you call it head smashed in head smashed in buffalo jump that's actually what it's called yeah it's so interesting that's so interesting huh but that's pretty much all that medicine that's known for really there it is yeah 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 so, so yeah, you can middle. see where yeah, it's just kind of out in the middle oh. of nowhere. There's the American border down there. Yeah. Then... Yeah. This is how I do a lot, of, a lot of my searching sometimes too, is I'll zoom into an area and then I'll, I'll check some of the pictures to see, uh, like even just, just, uh, an example. Sometimes it doesn't, uh, doesn't, uh, reveal any results, but sometimes I even look in the water and I say, well, brick, are we looking at brick? Are those red rocks bricks? I don't know. I don't know. There's a dam. Yeah. The dams is another part of the narrative as well, uh, in my opinion. There's something going on here. There was something left over from the old world, whether they were uh, bolstering them or building on old old ones, or they were flooding valleys with evidence as well. Yeah, that's a great way to bury towns and old world cities is to just, oh, we're going to put a dam right here, and then it's, this river is eventually going to be a huge lake. Right. So, yeah. I mean, they've I mean, there's there's evidence of that where they actually legitimately did, legitimately did that. They said, "Yeah, we had to evacuate like three towns in this valley." And yeah. Oh, you know, and it's all buried underwater now. And you hear, so, yeah. I've heard, I, I know several songs that talk about buried towns, like in you know artists that have made songs about that. There's there's a this lake up here, where I am. This one here is uh, called Williston Lake, and that's dammed. It's got several dams on it, and they flooded oh, this okay. whole valley here. Huh. Yeah. And yeah, here the other as well. thing too is uh, like we were talking about trains and you know the potentially being pre-existing infrastructure. Uh-huh. I think, like you said, some of the dams, and that's not to say that you know we didn't build any of the train tracks in the Victorian era. Of course we did. Uh-huh. You know, we added on to I think what was already there. Again, uh-huh. once we figured out what it was, how how it worked, and how uh-huh. to lay down the track, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to re reverse engineer how do you lay railroad track once yeah. they figured that out and got the machines working you know yeah. they find the roundhouses and the train barns and all yeah. the stuff's there 
they just got to get it up and running. And then they can, like you said, with the dams, expand upon it. Same thing with trains. And same thing, I think, with canals. Uh, there's weird irrigation canals all over Alberta here. Is that, that right? That they I say, didn't know oh, that. Oh, the farmers just dug those, but they go for like thousands and thousands of miles and zigzag all Is over Is that right? I, I did not know that. That's very interesting. That's a very interesting part of the historical narrative for that area. Hmm. Yeah. Look at that. That's that Bath Springs. Yeah. 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 I, I did a video on the, the Erie Canal. So I'm sort of jumping around, but that whole area too of, of Eastern North America. And oh, yeah. It's, it's riddled. I mean, yeah. I guess you, you're from Montreal. So you probably, mm -hmm. you probably know all about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just uh, the star forts, the, the canals, the, the train systems, the, uh, yeah. the those vertical streetcars. Uh, what are uh -huh. those called? Uh, vernaculars. The okay. Vertical, oh, yeah. You know, they, they bring yes. up on like a 45 degree angle. Imagine the engineering uh, involved there too, right? For that. Like all uh, that stuff, the, that upside down, uh, like, I don't know, for lack of a better term, subway that's above <laughs> ground that hangs underneath like a girder system. So mm -hmm. it's suspended from the top. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then, yeah, subways themselves. It's just, I mean, yeah. you, a, you know, a, a guy could go on forever down these, side trails right well it's that's why i try to stay focused on calgary i'll branch off a bit to trains and maybe yeah. i might expand some of my content to canada overall but yeah i try to stay in that sort of i don't know well what's just funny try is to keep a canadian content eh when you do that too and you think okay well i'm just going to keep it in here you, you still probably find that there's so much there's such a large volume of uh of information that you can't it, it yeah. just keeps coming you know well that's the old banff spring banff hot springs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sulfur mountain yeah, yeah yeah i can remember going there in 1981 before it got all touristy it kind of looks like that the second picture there on the top left Here? second from the yeah where it's sort of color yeah it looks like it was taken in the 70s or 80s maybe so yeah, i remember at... going when it was like that uh-huh now it's all been refurbished, revamped, kind of modernized. Some of that stonework still exists, but yeah. you used to be able to go into the cave there and just wander in. And uh -huh. the cave goes in a couple of hundred feet to the, the source of the hot spring itself, where it comes uh -huh. right out of the rock. Yeah. Now you, it's it's got to be a guided tour. and you, you know, you can't step off the main path and all that BS. All sorts of cash involved, I assume. Oh, to... yeah. Used to be able to just wander in there for free. Oh, now really? It's, yeah. Wow. Yeah. In the early 80s, you could just Different world. walk in there. I mean, the place was all locked up on the outside, uh -huh. but you uh -huh. could wander around. The pools were empty, but you could go oh. right into the cave and everything. You could wander around the grounds, climb up the stairs outside, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. I've never, but, I've never been to, I might have driven through Banff once, but I've never actually been there and to, to stay there. But uh, yeah, look here. at that. Going back in time, 1932, they're saying here. I love when they put the dates just just to clear clear it all up for us too on a lot of these buildings. Yeah, that's how do that's such a weird thing that you you've got you got to think that has to be associated with re, re, redesignating some of this stuff post reset because oh, yeah. I mean, why would you put a date on a building? So hey, this is when we built this. Like who cares? Yeah, it's like, why, it, right? like, why, yeah, like why? <laughs> Why would they have done a bunch of narcissists back in the old world where, you know, pre <laughs> pre reset, where they just decided they were going to put dates all over everything. No, yeah, they yeah. would put beautiful carvings, not yeah. dates. Yeah. I think no, it's, it's us that, yeah, we come by and we go, Oh yeah, we've, this was founded in 1932. It's, it's solidifying their narrative, right? It's uh, yeah. I, for sure. I think that's, that's what's going on there. Yeah. Here's and, the, I mean, most of us, myself included, uh, yeah. Just go, duh, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, see, back in the day, you could just walk this right is up the... to the edge of the water, the pool there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there it comes right out of the rock. Yeah. It is it is a little smelly because it is it does sulfur. have some sulfur. But yeah. But it also yeah. has got, it's really high in a lot of other minerals. It was touted back in the Victorian era as, you know, it's a health tonic, or not tonic, but health spa, and you, yes. you know, you... You soak in the hot springs, which I do believe. Yeah, I don't doubt that. And I, it's also a big part of the narrative, too. Like I did a video on Saratoga Springs in New York. Mm -hmm. 
and same the same story goes there it used to be a, an escape where people would go and re rejuvenate their health after living in the city for however long right yep yep that's the yeah. story with the old Banff hot springs too yeah interesting yeah so that that the same stories this is another part of it where the same stories seem to pop up um in different regions you yeah know? well remember earlier um when we were chatting in private i was telling you that i met up yesterday with somebody that lives here in calgary you mm -hmm. know who happened to be a subscriber and he's you know he's into this whole mm -hmm. uh research of mud flood and all that stuff mm -hmm. and we got together and we were talking about you know all kinds of uh sort of theories and ideas about uh you know what these events were and if they were cyclical and if maybe each one was different and if some of them are natural and then maybe the powers who should not be learned how to trigger some of these natural events so they become man-made events or whatever mm -hmm. anyways mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about how a lot of places seem to have almost identical narratives they just changed some of the key figures names the mm -hmm. mayor was so and so or what they just changed some of the you know the mayor of this or the the architect of that or whatever yeah and then it's they become like i don't know a couple of hundred different stories that they can just stamp you know calgary gets this narrative cowboys and indians and they discover oil you know well well that's that's funny houston will have that same narrative then cowboys <laughs> and indians and they they, they discover yeah. oil and they just stamp it with that they'll never story. put it together yeah <laughs> they're stupid yeah, yeah. <laughs> You right. know, and then when you look into it long enough, you start, you know, the same architect's name. He's built like, you know, 140 different structures all over North America. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, like, Give me, get out of here. And he built his first one because he won a contest. It's like, really? I like to. That's how they decided to build these beautiful buildings back in the day. I would just have a contest. Yeah. 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 It's, and then, and these, a lot of the guys that win have no experience and they, you know, flunked out of school and, and whatever yeah. right just yeah, yeah, right yeah. They, re they recycle the narrative because they're not it's too much first of all there's too much for them to uh um to put detail into all these stories that's right they have the, they have, there's too much to hide for them to come up with a unique 100 percent individual story for every building in every city or town with every piece of tech or every design feature or every embellishment on these buildings or what have you i mean it's, they, yeah. they'd go more nuts than us trying to figure it out yeah i like the analogy that some people use to like um like when i was younger um we used to play a lot of video games like role-playing style video games where you're walking around a fantasy world right mm -hmm. yeah but when you get to the edges of the programmed world it, it's all glitchy <laughs> yeah you know what i mean you can't go much further like you just stop you're going through the forest you can't go any further um, and it's the, it was not enough program written to make yes. the world um, um, full enough to understand. So I, I use that analogy to describe this. They tried to cover up what happened. Mm -hmm. Tried to sell us, sell us a what is it? What's the saying? Sell us. I don't know what the saying is, but uh, a bag of goods. They tried to yeah. sell us a bag of goods. Yeah. Um, but it's wearing off, and here we are in 2022, and more and more of us are just looking at it and saying, uh, -uh I don't think so yeah oh, there's of course there's a lovely carnegie library and i think you're working on i think that's a project you're working on right i am yeah i, yeah. I did a little bit of a collection do you know do you know the story on, of the carnegie libraries that, uh, at all oh absolutely i do because we have one here <laughs> <laughs> and, and i went out and i shot video of it yep and it did looks you... almost identical to the one you're showing right now actually. is that right and, yeah so and what gets me too and we talked about this earlier is you get the windows down here and you got all this infrastructure yeah yeah I, actually, you have a good video too. You're just going down a street in Calgary, and the the yards are elevated from oh, the yeah, sidewalk. Yeah. That is yeah, such yeah, a strange thing. Yeah, they all have thing. retaining walls. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's not the only street in my neighborhood. That's right in my neighborhood. That's three blocks from where I live. <laughs> wow. And that's not the only street in my neighborhood that does that because the narrative of my neighborhood was originally it was owned by CP Rail. Okay. And I live west of 14th Street, and 14th Street was the town and later the city of Calgary's sort of city limit or boundary. And everything uh -huh. west of 14th Street belonged to CP Rail. Yeah. And CP Rail sold it to the city, and the city annexed it and 
began developing it in two stages, one in 1905 and one in 1907. Hmm. And so the narrative is that they had to level the streets because eventually they wanted to bring the streetcar into that neighborhood too. Oh, all and, for that short-lived streetcar, eh? Yeah, exactly. And uh, they had, you know, there was, you know, big churches are in my neighborhood, old, old world red brick churches. There's, yeah. the, old, there's the old Calgary Tennis Club from like 19, 1918 or something. So yeah. it became very quickly uh, kind of a nice sort of a upper middle class neighborhood uh, with these big quote unquote Victorian and Edwardian style homes. And uh, that's the narrative is they had to level the streets. So that's why a lot of these yards have these retaining walls and the houses are up on what look like elevated lots, lots, yeah. you know, lots of land that are elevated yeah. two feet, two and a half feet. But the funny thing though, is that right across the street from that video that you're talking about, right across the street from that row of houses, Mm -hmm. is um, an old uh, Catholic church that was built, well, the narrative is, I don't know, 1921 or something off the top of my head. And that uh -huh. thing's got mud flood windows and bricks that go right down into the ground and everything too. So it's like, well, which one is it? Did they have to lower the streets to make everything level? <laughs> or are the streets, like, you know what I mean? Like, why are some buildings up high they contradict uh, the narrative on either end, either side of the street. Is that yeah, one saying? side of the street, the houses are up high, and then on the that's other funny. side of the street, the search, the church is sunken down low. And I'm like, well, that's, that's, it still doesn't really make sense. Funny. It still doesn't make sense. No, it's really interesting, actually. And the well, you brought up Catholic is, Church. So. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Wow. So I, I, I have a collection. I, I, I isolated all the different. Uh, what do we call them? Like. Uh, subsections of christianity i don't know the term for that but you have the methodists and you, i did one on the methodists mm -hmm. but but I, I i separated my files because originally i was going to look just churches in, yeah. in north america and then i realized this is ridiculous so i had to narrow it down to each denomination that's what I, the word i was looking for oh okay yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh and that whole narrative too is all part of the uh the whole the whole religion narrative i i would suggest is all part of the hijacking of sure. uh, I would, the old I world tech agree and mm -hmm. slapping the new label on it right yeah giving so. it a quick um there's a channel the guy is over in the uk his name's dave ebony okay so he shows a lot of old really what are supposedly really old world buildings and i think some of them are really really old like yeah. it'll again the date on it'll say you know like 1790 but yeah. you're just like oh where they built it with mud flood windows in 1790 is that what you're trying to tell me but he calls it, these buildings a Victorian tarred up. So he's oh. saying that all the beautiful embellishments, the Victorians came in and put a lot of that stuff, stuff up after the fact because they were trying to copy the Phoenicians who yeah. tarred it up the red brick. So if you go, if you sort of tear away the Victorian stuff, you get to Phoenician stuff and then you tear I, away I've, the Phoenician I've heard, I'm stuff familiar with that, yeah. and you get the red brick. Yeah. yeah. Like the coating that was put on after some people have said, yeah, that it comes from the, the, the subsequent. Yeah, where is this? Uh, it almost looks like a minaret, the taller tower, you know. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, some of these old postcard postcards have a bit of a stretched feel, but where is this? Ottawa. This is in Ottawa. That almost right. looks Moorish, right? A little bit. Yes. Kind of. yeah. I noticed this too. You get these four around the outside. Um, very common on a lot of yeah, one, one in the middle and four around. Yeah. One thing with the churches too is it allowed them to keep these buildings erect and intact without people scratching their heads too much. Like w when they introduced this whole religious narrative, mm -hmm. right? And then what? What? How do we explain the construction? Well, people did, built that way for God. Yeah, for something. the glory of for the glory of God. Yeah. They're just so yeah, motivated yeah. by God that they they were they were got really good at it. I don't know. It's yeah. Just, Again, and that's just the rubber stamping of the narrative. Okay, buildings that kind of look like this, okay, those will be churches. Buildings that kind of look like that, they'll be post offices. Mm -hmm. Buildings that look like this, they'll be state capitals. Or, state capitals. Or, Ooh, or, state or capitals. County, county buildings or whatever. Count, you know, courthouses. Courthouses. Yeah. Yeah. Courthouses, yeah. provincial yeah. capital buildings. Mm -hmm. If you're up here in up in Canada, eh? 
and, Victoria's uh, got something special. I was I was there this summer. And, oh yeah, man. Victoria's crazy. The provincial capital there is. I actually I was walking around, did little boots on the ground around that building, and uh, they have all the, the the vents in the in the ground, like the grates. And yeah. Look, I looked down one of them, and it was red brick, and it was must have been gone down about twenty feet at least. And you know that sort of disappeared. Most more than likely, during the Victorian area, those grates were probably pavement lights. Mm. Those like glass sidewalk kind of dealios, you know. That's those, yeah. Right? That's yeah. that's a very interesting part of the uh, old world narrative, for sure. You know, the very fact that they were harnessing daylight yeah. and like utilizing the space underneath streets and sidewalks is just. It's I mean, if you don't need to me that you don't need much more proof than that of a mud flood when you know there's there's a, a level or sometimes two levels underneath the sidewalk that extends out into the under the street in some cases too yeah. that is so widely used that they have to put in pavement lights to get light daylight down in there there's arched windows and arched doors down under there like why do you need to be fancy if it's underground you don't need all the fancy schmancy stuff if it's just some storage cellar underground right so well it's very the layers odd. yeah these layered yeah. cities is it's just incredible right the layers yeah. of like i get comments sometimes on my videos and it's uh they're from the, the city that i did the video on and i say well you should check out the tunnels so when i was in college there was a tunnel that went to the pub and just amazing just crazy stuff you know like i hear tunnel stories of almost every city too yeah like people in my comments will say oh you know uh because we got into talking about tunnels a little bit um i, I stuff beagle and myself mm -hmm. and then uh, when i re-uploaded that on my channel uh some people were commenting about tunnels and stuff and i think somebody had commented about something that i hadn't even heard that there was is it, i think it's in moose jaw saskatchewan where there's a whole series of tunnels that are all that go for kilometers all around the downtown area because during the American Prohibition, they were making Canadian whiskey up in, it was either Moose Jaw or Saskatoon, but I want to say Moose Jaw. But anyway, <laughs> making Canadian whiskey, and then it was linked to Al Capone, and they would smuggle it out of Moose Jaw or whatever under these tunnels, and then load it onto trains or, or trucks or, or whatever. Wow. To get That's it comical. across the border. That's mighty yeah. comical, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. Far-fetched. At, at the very least, it's far-fetched. Well, even here in Calgary, there's a uh, a place that's underneath the old grain exchange building downtown, which is an old world building. Uh -huh. and, but you have to get to it from outside. It's a steep, steep set of stairs that goes down from the sidewalk, down the side of the building. And it's this little underground club called the speakeasy and the narrative is that it was a speakeasy during the prohibition and mm -hmm. i'm like well wait a second we didn't really even have prohibition here in canada we had the temperance movement uh, -huh. uh some some parts of canada called it prohibition because the terms are kind of used interchangeably but it wasn't some federal law that was brought down and then provincial provincially regulated like how it was in the u.s in the 30s where prohibition yep. was a federal uh, sort of uh, declaration yep. or whatever, but then Elliot it was controlled Ness. on a state level <laughs> and, a, and a county level, right? Mm -hmm. So you could have two counties next to each other, and after prohibition, one stayed wet, or sorry, one stayed dry, in other words, yeah. no booze, and the county yeah. right next to it would be a wet county, or you could drink in that county. That's interesting. But that was in the 30s, and they called it the prohibition. And our mm -hmm. temperance move it, movement here in canada was right around world war one era hmm. like just after world war one so we got so a like tw war. 20 year gap there almost yeah so you're using prohibition as a term for something that was termed that in the u.s in the 30s and they're trying to rubber stamp that term to the temperance movement in moose jaw in the teens huh. you know and Doesn't obviously a way. big religious connotation with the temperance movement, right? Yes, back, that back was the thing, churches. was that it was alcohol corrupted your morals and, you know, people weren't going to church and people weren't going to work and people were neglecting their families and yada, yada, yada. 
So that was the whole temperance movement was to try to get people to temper their thirst for most, especially hard liquor, uh -huh. you know, whiskey and that sort of thing. Beer, not so much because oh. it was kind of a, categorized differently, right? Well, the breweries, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's the other big thing. Oh man, a town of you know five hundred people's got two breweries. Like what? Uh, I I did one on I think it was Cincinnati. And I, I, I watch a little blurb on history, and I think they had somewhere around 30 breweries in the late 1800s yeah. in, in the town of Cincinnati, which had maybe 100, 150,000 people at the time, maybe 200. I, I, I'm not exactly sure, but in, in that in around there, and yeah. 30 breweries, 30. That's crazy. And people say, well, well 200,000 people. So, of course, and you're like, well, wait a second. You got to split the population, 200,000 people, but some of those are going to be kids. Yeah. A lot of those, and back then people had a lot of kids. People had like three, four, five, six, oh, seven ten, kids. Ten? Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 So it's not 200,000 people that are of legal drinking age, and that's why you need all those breweries. There's probably only like 80,000 adults, and the other 120,000 are kids. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like. And not uh, everybody I, drank either, right? Definitely so, not. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, trying to explain like people trying to fit it back into the box you know fit fit the story back into the box i find it's 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 a mental gymnastics exercise when you try to bring these up and they're trying to say well this like you said they, well this because you know they usually start with that phrase yeah uh, and then yeah. they try to jam it back into the historical narrative yeah. let's put it back in there where it belongs because i don't want to question and, and even if you just dismiss the fact that even if you just say okay you know what forget the number crunching of the amount of people in this area and how many people would be drinking that much beer that you need that many breweries. You nice. could just say, okay, let's throw all that in the, we'll put a pin in that. We'll come back to it later if we want to, but we don't even have to just look at like the photos that you're showing and the postcards you're showing of the sizes of these yeah. breweries. So Maybe. not only do you have a city of 200,000 people that has 20 or 25 of these, but yeah. most of them are that size. Huge. Like what is this, Quincy, Illinois? I've never heard of Quincy, but mm -hmm. they have massive brewery. And it's going to have that, what's that thing called on the top of that main building? The pergola? Hoop, cupola, yeah. what? Or the cupola, yeah. Cupola. And, oh, they got the flag up here, though. They do have the flag up there. Well, sure. You got you to put <laughs> But what are those the other four towers on the four corners that don't have flags on them? Oh, On that yeah. same building. What yeah. are those things? And then the, the horse and buggies down here. Just horses, poor horses, say. Eh? Poor horses. Imagine the loads of brick and stone they would have had to haul for, you know, how many horses died in the making of these buildings. Right. Does it you know? whoop them poor horses to exhaustion trying to haul all that stuff. Now, in some cases, I do know that um, they were able to run a lot of the building materials to the building site or to the job site by rail track. They could Absolutely. lay temporary rail, rail track. And if they were going to build something, especially something that was going to be quite large and yeah. required a lot of materials and, and to move a lot of construction workers too, because the guys that would report for work, a lot of them would ride the train into the job site too, along yeah. with all the building materials. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But even with that said, again, 100, 200,000 people in a city, uh, let's just say, okay, for shits and giggles, 100,000 of them are adults, half uh -huh. of them are men. So now you're down to 50,000 men. Is uh -huh. every single one of those 50,000 men in the construction industry? No. Some of them are farmers, some of them are tailors, some of them yeah. work in factories that have already been built, supposedly. And, and uh, not just in the construction industry, but highly skilled, highly skilled. Well, that's it too. Not they're just not guys just toting shovels and wheelbarrows. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. there's, there's guys that are going to be carving stones and oh. uh, uh, people that are working with steel and iron. Uh -huh. So all kinds of different skill sets and you got to bring them all in together. And uh, sure, in a lot of cases, they would bring skilled workers in from neighboring cities or towns, of course, but except for those towns are building them as well at the same time. That's so the thing. That. Though. <laughs> so it's like how many people can they shuffle around to try to fit the narrative? Yeah. Yeah. It gets exhausting and it gets uh, again it, we get to the edge of the uh programming and it just starts to glitch. That's that's what how I see it. Well yesterday uh when my new friend and I were walking around Kensington, we were both 
making note of how many of the buildings had a date between 1910 and 1912 plastered on it or, okay. or, or carved into it or stamped on sure. it, right? Yeah, yeah. And even just in Kensington, which is really only about, let's say, 12 block, 12 square blocks, give or take, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of the, the some of those buildings that are three or four story brick and sandstone buildings of those dates, there's like, you know, 20 of them. Yeah. So it's like, okay. At the same you know, time? Yeah. Going so they were the all built time. within a couple of years. Calgary had a population of about 12,000 people, 12 to 15,000 people in 1910, uh -huh. roughly. Uh -huh. Let's say 50, let's even say 20,000 people. Yeah, there uh -huh. you go. We're getting so let's this say 20,000 yeah. people. So they, they managed to build like two dozen of buildings like that in the span of two years. And it would we take do two your years math. to build one of them. Yeah, yeah. When we do your math where you say, you know, split that in half and then split that in half again for the able-bodied yeah. and, of course, all male workers at the time. Mm -hmm. And then, like you say, how many how many skilled hands are available to um, to do this work? I wanted to bring up, too, because we had a little bit of a comment exchange um, about Vancouver and Calgary both having the same start date. They both had a fire, right, in 1886? Yeah, yeah, same same year of our both of our cities share our great fire in 1886. Yeah, isn't that strange? Isn't that that Yours to me? Was in that... November, I think, and mine was in May, I think. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, and it's like a kickoff of the, like the Vancouver one is ridiculous. It's like all buildings burned down except for three, and then we just and then 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 they just went great guns blazing and rebuilt the city. And it is that's what it is. the narrative here too. Is that uh, is it? And the fire was accidentally potentially started as a spark in a in a feed storage yeah. building. Yeah, it was a wooden building. Yeah, and then they tell you that seventeen buildings burnt down all in the downtown core. Oops, yeah. no, sorry, nineteen. Oops, no, seventeen. Oops, no, nineteen. So again, depending on the, the your source, uh, yeah. the discrepancy of two buildings. Yeah. Um, and this is some of these sources are from like City of Calgary website, Province of Alberta website. These it's the official. Websites. It's the official version, right? It's the. It's yeah. What they. Yeah. It's so then that was why they said, okay, now we're going to start building with brick and sandstone because all the wooden buildings burnt down. But also part of that narrative of the Great Calgary Fire was some of the stone or masonry buildings, whether it was brick or or sandstone, that were already here prior uh -huh. to the Great Fire those were damaged and collapsed during the fire too so that uh -huh. same old story where brick and stone buildings are burning down uh-huh so then the to... mayor said okay from now on brick. because of the great fire everything yeah. has to be built out of brick or stone sandstone yeah yeah that's the same thing you see that all over the place and then the pictures contradict it yes right they, put, yeah. they contradict that narrative so. oh sorry houses could be of course wooden frame houses but any building of yeah. sizable uh you know a, a sizable building or a building of importance so a school uh -huh. a library a government yeah. building uh yada 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 that had to yeah. be brick or sandstone or a combination of both or whatever yeah uh but if you're building your house or a little general store yeah uh that can be a wood frame house as long yeah. as it's no more than two or three floors yada yada that whole thing you know all those bylaws and stuff absolutely right? yeah it's it's this explanation and then like you say well we better get dates on these buildings so it fits this timeline so we're yeah. gonna slap the date on the front so nobody asks questions right, right. and there's one building on stephen avenue that's a, an old world heritage building yeah. and the narrative on that is that it was built and it burned down like a year later or something uh -huh. So it was rebuilt, and then it burnt down again, and then it was rebuilt again. Yeah, yeah. The double whammy, I've seen that yeah, before. So that, that, that one particular building had two, or maybe even it was three fires. And I'm like, get, get the hell out of here with that bullshit. I'm going to see if I have my Calgary file here. There's there's the bank there, too, that gets me. I don't I don't know if I have it on hand. Oh, the old Bank of Montreal? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Because that went up. And stuff. I think that's like eighteen right away. I think that's like within four years of the fire. They're 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 yeah. saying that that yeah. thing went up, right? And I yeah. I don't I'm not sure where it is on here, but it's like so that's that's old world. Like those columns, the frieze in front, like the Rome the Roman look to yes. it. You know, like yeah. it's 
who built that in Calgary in 1890? For you cowboys know? and Indians. Because right. that's the narrative for Calgary's cowboys and Indians, cattle ranchers, yeah. maybe a few grain farmers. Um, and then, of course, you know, in your little town, you got your, you know, your church, your school, your mercantile, your bank, your yada, 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 of course. Yeah. But I mean, even when they were taking census, you know, in the, you know, 1915 and all that, when it, Calgary by this point is like 50,000 people, still a lot of the people that they're counting as people that, live in calgary by the census they're uh -huh. living on ranches and farms yeah not in the downtown core in these big buildings yeah yeah so why do dusty ranch hands and cowboys and wheat farmers need a you know two-story or three-story brick and sandstone library or mm -hmm. a church that seats a thousand people yeah, with vaulted ceilings that are maybe many one church, high. but do you need twenty-eight churches that feed seat a thousand people? Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. crazy. And getting back to churches, have you noticed that there's certain churches that seem like what's depending on the sect or the subsect of whatever uh -huh. of the three Abrahamic religions? Uh -huh. Depending on what sect it is, it seems like whether they are allowed to keep the spire or the steeple or not. Some churches, it seems like they they knock off the pointy bit and they just keep it at that yeah. sort of squared top, the castle looking tower. Yeah. And they yeah. knock off the spire. It seems like the Catholics are allowed to keep the spires. The Mormons yeah. are allowed to keep the spires. Yeah. But the Lutherans and the Meth Methodists, not where we're, you're getting castrated. You're yep. getting, uh, not, no, not castrated. You get circumcised. We're cutting they off. They look a your, bit more like this, hip. right? Yes. A little bit. Yeah. You're, yeah, you make a good point. That's definitely, uh, that's definitely something. Not, not that, in all uh, cases, but I've noticed at, at least yeah. from what I've seen, not only here in Calgary, but just other channels on YouTube that like your channel and other channel like Beegs and John mm -hmm. Levi and like all these channels that uh, kind of yeah. explore these old photos. And it yeah. seems like some churches had their spires knocked off and their bells taken and all that too. Yeah. And it depended on what branch of what religion. Yeah. They're like uh, circumcised for lack of a better word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Look at a brick. I know. That. Buffalo, right? And the inlay on those sort of rounded. Uh, so, I... Look at all that. So this kind of this goes this goes back to what I was saying. Like as a as a Finnish carpenter, um, when I look at this type of stuff, I try to put it into the shoes of somebody who does this type of work for a living, and I I just try to ask myself, okay, what would it take to do that? And I, a lot of the stuff I can't even get to the beginning of how they might have put this together. Some of it, it's really, it's beyond comprehension of the way that we build today. Yeah, like okay. some of those smooth glazed larger what look like larger red bricks kind of at the top here yes yeah, so, yeah right where your cursor yeah. is in there like those yeah. could be just glazed porcelain tiles that might be yeah. an inch thick that's yeah. fine and underneath that is probably the red brick like we're seeing just to the right of yeah. those tiles so what's this but, then? but even even that <laughs> said well yeah. that could be terracotta who knows yeah right yeah like i just found out that the you know the hudson's bay building downtown calgary the that old world Tartarian yeah. looking building. Yeah, let's check it out. I I just found out that that's that's a terracotta skin on that building. They they built it out of you know iron and steel beams and then brick and then yeah. they they covered it in terracotta. This is what you're talking about. This one here. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, the Bay Building. Uh, very similar to the Vancouver one. This is Vancouver one up here. Yeah, they, the, a lot of them look identical. Toronto looks very similar. Uh, yeah, and they've so taken a lot of they've taken a lot of the the flair and the embellishment off of it. Of course, but it's down, it's terracotta and limestone. Uh huh. And this is and steel I, steel frame structure, right? Yeah, and, steel and brick. And yeah. then they they covered it with that beautiful terracotta glazed terracotta, uh -huh. uh, limestone, and I. And I think they're saying that like those arches and those pillars that, that sort of balustrade on the main level there on that, which is Here? the east facing side. Yeah, all okay. down the no, all down oh, your down. left side. Yeah, oh yes, yes, yes. Here, yeah. Those columns they say are either marble or granite, I can't remember. Are they shiny? It's hard to tell. Yeah, they're shiny. Yeah. 
yeah, I love that the shiny columns too on the old world buildings. It's like it's quite the feat. But they've scrubbed the a lot of the uh, medallions and cartouches, and they've removed a lot of the. It used to have like yeah, see, it used to have tons of tech oh. on the top. Uh, it used yeah, to have here a lot yeah, more of that. like. Um, when you compare it to that, there. Yeah. And it used to have wow. a lot more sort of statues and, and the faces and mm -hmm. the gargoyles and mm -hmm. all that stuff on it. And they've taken all that shit off. And then the question is, why? Well, I tell you why. The narrative that they say why they've removed it is because of the age of the building. It was getting too hard to maintain. Oh. And the narrative was that some of it was falling off and they didn't want people to, down below on the sidewalk to get injured yeah. from a falling medallion or cartouche or embellishment. Yeah. Uh, so they removed a lot of them. Uh, to... That's the inside right there, it looks like. Elizabethan dining room. Yeah, that's and they still have a dining room. It's on the top top floor. It's oh, not as fancy right? as this anymore, though. It's almost more of like a cafeteria style of now. Of course. Because like, you can't have This is fancy. what gets me, right? This type yeah. of stuff, the ceilings and the coffer. Like, I've done this type of trim work before. Mm -hmm. um and it's it's not it's very very difficult work to do you would it doesn't matter whether cool. it's uh copper uh yeah. uh plaster. hammer tin pla yeah. preformed plaster it doesn't matter yeah. what the material they used it's yeah. all a pain in the ass and it's very really difficult extravagant and yeah it's tough and then to the, the paneling too so they see all the wood paneling here like yeah all that's this. all that's all um i can't remember what wood Oak? it was it might it, be oak. I, it might be oak or walnut. I can't remember. Yeah, it's definitely a hardwood. But even for to do this, like if you if you were in 2022 and you were to to, to ask somebody to build you a room like this, the, to the cost and the time that it would take to do it with the tools we have today, mm -hmm. it's it's astronomical. Astro yeah. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And th this is supposedly all done. I don't know if it's supposed to be pre-power tool. It's definitely early power tools. Um, all this panel work. But yeah, I, I can't remember that. what the date was, the, the narrative of the date on this was, I want to say right around 1920-ish. Huh, that sounds about right. So yeah, yeah you'd, you'd have power tools by then. and But not very you know, good ones. <laughs> but it would still take you forever compared to, you know, yeah. let's say 30 years later in the 1950s. Yeah. yeah. And now, now you're talking. Now, now you can bang out this stuff. It's still intricate hard work, but now you can bang it out with a little bit more efficiency. Sure, sure. But you still need the skilled hands to, and this is That's to, to keep this miter locked for 120 years. Yeah. Right. Without it popping, the glue joint popping or any of those types of things. Those are things that I think about. I've gone back to jobs two years later where, you know, the wood, oh, there's the wood quality issue as mm. well. The quality of wood that we're working with now compared to then. And uh, uh, keep in mind that the climate in Calgary is way different than where you are there in the Kootenays. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's very dry here in the summer, especially. It's drier yeah. than a popcorn fart. Let me so tell you. So it dry out, dry right out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You got to use that there Murphy's oil soap or something like your grandma used to use or whatever. Yeah, you get gets all gets all skin gets all cracked or. Yeah. 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 And uh, the thing that's crazy about this building as well is that to keep in mind is that it's the bay, right? The Hudson's Bay Company. Oh so yeah. So it's. It's this is all of that extravagance, all of that pomp, and all of that fancy schmancy stuff mm -hmm. is all on the back of the fur trade. Is the narrative? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's Hudson's where they. Bay that's company. where the Bay made their money. Dutch East was, India Company, Hudson Bay Company, those are big setters of the new narrative. I, I would suggest. Yeah, and they're all they're all the same. I think they say that the uh, Hudson's Bay Trading Company was separate from the British East India trading company, but no, I think uh -huh. it was just a branch of, it was like of a course. franchise of just a different, just a different name. Of course. Yeah. And look here, you have a taper to the column as well. Yeah. So it wasn't enough just to make a straight column. They had yeah. to taper it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the Masonic checkerboard back here. I love to see that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you got to have that in there. Yeah. Yeah, and the funny thing about that building too is that it has a basement level that's has retail space in it, uh -huh. with like really old escalators. I mean, these escalators are so old they're constantly break down. Yeah, uh, they are definitely escalators from like the 30s or something. It's all uh -huh. like brass. Cool. Uh, Love to check that out. And then the st the steps that you stand on are steel, but all the surrounding stuff is brass on these old uh, escalators. 
But anyways, That's you go cool. down to what is the basement, and uh -huh. there's retail shopping down in there too. That's, That's the they bay. They're notorious for that. The bay buildings, Hudson's yeah. Bay buildings. We had one. But like then that. guess yeah. what? Underneath what they call their basement retail space, there's two more levels below that. What? There's wow. their ba actual sub. There's a sub basement, and then their actual basement. The sub basement is like storage for mm -hmm. a lot of their merchandise and products, mm -hmm. and then the basement is for you know all of the ser services for the building, the mm. so-called boiler and natural gas furnace and yada yada yada. And so I guess part of my argument is. Uh... Can I can I get a photo of one of these excav excavations anywhere? Like you can give me construction photos of a lot of these buildings when they're right. working on the last level or two, right? Where they well, have the I do thing. have one construction photo of the bay, but unfortunately, it's the old bay, not this not this Hudson's Bay yeah. in its current location, which yeah. is I think is on the corner of Second Street and Eighth Avenue Southwest. But okay. I do have a construction photo from the original bay building which was two blocks west and it was just a little three-story it was about i don't know a quarter the size of this one it this is only... the same one right yeah and they yeah. the narrative is they grew out of the 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 original and then built the one that you're showing but we have no no, no pictures of the second one being built no but i do have one if you want i can share it with you but i sure. do have yeah, one here I'll... i just stopped Let that just uh so let me just find it here. I just got to remember where I put the dang thing now. Uh, you know, when you have, you create so many folders and then you give them stupid names. No, like I, odds I never and do sods. That. <laughs> odds and sods is the name of this folder. I love, I love it. I love it. That's not telling me anything. That's a good name <laughs> for a band, odds and sods. Yeah, yeah, actually. <laughs> Let me yeah. see here. Uh, sorry, bear with me here. Yeah, it's amateur hour here at New West Reset. Hey, once we're pros, we get discredited anyway. So you got to have a bit of amateur flair, right? <laughs> That's right. Once you <laughs> once you get too polished, then it's uh, you're funded. Say, yeah, you're, you're sold out. That's right. Yeah. Uh, is it this one? <laughs> Shit. What the hell is it now? No, it's no worries. Uh, take, take your time. Ten. I love some of the construction photos that they try to pass off on us. Actually, they make me laugh. Yeah, I know, but right? There's Damn, a, definitely the a lot of fakery thing? going on in that department. I I suggest a lot of fakery. Oh yeah, I would agree with you. The deception is the name of the game, right? So, how you have to uh, have to believe that they're deceiving us on all levels. Uh, oh, here it is. Okay, I found the damn thing. Okay, here we go. Uh... All right, can you can you see that? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this is the Knox United Church, which is oh, still yeah. where it is, but the bay is actually two blocks east and one block south of the Knox United Church now. Well, no, sorry, it's two. Yeah, 1911. Yeah. yeah. So here's your horses and buggies, literally wow. down about, say, 25 feet. Sure. So you got a bunch of horse and buggies up here, uh -huh. and then a whole bunch of horse and buggies down. And they've put like a wooden gang plank way or something along yeah. here yeah. To, to facilitate, which again, because of the narrative, they tell us, well, you know, Horse and buggy built everything, but then we see yeah. pictures with dirt roads. So the horses can't manage these wagons through this crap very easily. So they built sort of a yeah. gangway. And how many wheels then, did they go through, right? Well, and yeah, that too. Hauling right? away all this dirt. They're hauling away dirt. And I'm guessing to be efficient, maybe what they're doing is these up here are dropping off construction supplies, building supplies. And these uh -huh. maybe here are hauling away. It looks like... There's debris in these carts, and that looks facing this direction. That looks like they're hauling them out yeah, off site. Yeah, yeah. And these ones are coming. This is in a construction unloading. photo. This is the yeah. early stages of construction for this building. Yeah, this is the building of the original Bay Building, which is no longer there. Did what? Did they tear that down? When did they tear that down? Do you know? Uh, I don't recall. 
they tore it down prior. I think they, they built the new bay, which is the one that we were just looking at, Yeah, yeah. which they say was built, I want to say, in the late 20s. And after oh. it was completed, they tore down the original bay. So this one did, it, lasted, nine, what, 10 years? The one that we're lo watching being yeah, built right now? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's yeah, 10, 10 years. years. Yeah. It's a lot of trouble to go to. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Now, I've yeah. heard some people say, no, no, this is the bay in its current, like the current bay being built. Uh -huh. But this is yeah. too small. The bay takes yeah. up an entire city block between 8th Avenue yeah. and 7th Avenue. And like and you it said. It takes up half the city block between 2nd Street yeah. uh, Southwest and 3rd Street Southwest. And several stories deep. Yes, Three, and it's way deeper deep. than this. Does this church still stand? This is still here. This is the gone. Knox? Is that, did you say that was the Knox? Yeah, Knox United. If I'm it, not still, it is still there? Yeah, it's so still the, there. And is it sitting and, next to the the current Hudson's Bay building? No, no. That's why. That's like I said. Oh. The current Hudson's Bay is two yeah. blocks east of this. I that's why you. I'm saying no, 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 no. This was the yeah. original bay, and yeah. in the narrative they do say that there was an original bay, and then Calgary grew it, so they yeah. built the new one, which is the current one now, yeah. and tore this one down. Just frivolously throwing buildings up and tearing them down. Yeah, eh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, this guy's, this one's money man, the, eh? Oh, this guy's making sure that they're spending wisely. He's the money man. You can see it. Yeah. Inheritor. He's an inheritor, I think. Anybody, he's got when he's got his hands in his pockets like that, he's really yeah. scrutinizing what's going on. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's unfortunate <laughs> that this place is gone. Yeah. Yeah. Spectacular. The conical, like the conical uh, tops. Like I, I love those ones. Like it's a like an ice cream cone. You turn it upside unless, down, fill it with ice cream. This is Knox United, and this is a different church. Like. Oh, See, yeah. now I'm confused. But I know I that know. one of these churches is still there, and this building in the back is still there. But this oh, yeah. is gone because this was yeah. a house, and there ain't no houses on Stephen Avenue anymore. A couple I'm chimneys coming is... out of that. One, two, three chimneys coming out of that one house there. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, this is, this is cool. the only photo that I could find where it's labeled construction of Hudson's Bay. Huh. But with nothing of nothing nothing of the the one that goes at least three stories underground. No, nope. which would be a more spectacular photo to take. You would think it would be. Yeah, exactly. And they, they never have. You know, they always had the old story of laying the cornerstone. You never see photos of laying of the cornerstone of these buildings. You know, I know, I and uh, especially in the Victorian era, they were all about big ceremonies and pomp yes. and circumstance, and the whole Snip town. the ribbon, come out. golden shovel. Yeah. All that shit. The whole town right. would come out to watch, and mm -hmm. they'd make a family event out of it. And we're told, but where's the evidence, right? Yeah, there's. You never see any photos of it, or even old video footage. Mm -hmm. Hell, I found old video footage from 1907, 1905. Yeah. So pretty old stuff, and yeah. none of it is some kind of stone laying ceremony, ribbon cutting ceremony, ground breaking ceremony. Yeah, and who are the builders? The builders are never highlighted. There's never like, oh, Johnny, Johnny was a bricklayer. He owned a company, whatever his name was, and they, 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 you know, they were very good at what they did. There's no like, it's all the always the architects and the people that funded the build, but it's that's never it. the people yeah. that did the work. It's the architects, and that's it. And the other thing too is in some photos, you see signs that have the name of the, let's say, the contractor or the construction company. Yeah. But we all know that we can do shitty signs and just slap them up. And that's no problem. But throw yeah. up some signs and take a picture. I mean, mm -hmm. we see these beautiful old world buildings with these crappy signs and crappy awnings and stuff thrown up. Or some mm -hmm. fruit stand thrown up in front of mud flood windows in these old buildings. We see that. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. Sure. But in that photo I just showed, there's not a single sign anywhere that says who's working on that in terms of a contracting company. They don't even have a freaking fence. But that that guy with his hands in uh, in his pockets there, with the 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 big chief in charge there, mm -hmm. that he's standing right on the edge of a thirty foot drop. There's no fence or nothing around that thing. Yeah, yeah. it just it's weird. It's really yeah. weird. Well, I I just did a video on the uh, guarantee building in. Uh in the buffalo a prudential building or whatever okay yeah yeah yeah. it's it's named the guarantee building after the company that built it which is the guarantee building company apparently right because and the, yeah, so i did I a search I video. yeah i did a search on the building why on the end too instead of two e's right 
Yeah, it's a, it's a funny spelling. It's a funny yeah. spelling. And uh, so I did a search on that company, the Guarantee Building Company, expecting to find Buffalo, New York, built all this amazing stuff during you know this 20-year period, then went broke. I expected to find that narrative. Sure. I didn't find anything. Like, they didn't exist. <laughs> I didn't find anything on that company, which I thought was strange. Well, that's like this whole red brick factory in Calgary thing when Bernie mm -hmm. said, well, there's, you know, in Edworthy Park, there's this place called Brickburn. And I said, well, yeah, I've heard of Brickburn. And he said, well, that's that was the name that this, this guy who started this brick company, that's what he named his company, Brickburn. So the only way I was even able to find out that now potentially, okay, there may have been a red brick factory here in Calgary. Because prior to that, like I said, I'd been looking and hadn't found anything. The only thing I found is no bricks were in Medicine Hat. Sandstone was Calgary. So I was like, duh, okay. Yeah. But, but the only way that I could find any information is by typing in specifically brick burn, brick factory, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Yeah. And then some images started coming up. And then also some articles and, uh, you know, propaganda started coming up afterwards. Isn't but if I funny? just typed in Calgary Brick Factory, yeah. nothing. Yeah. It's funny how you have to dig specifically. It's very interesting how that works, too. It's not going to be handed to you on a plate. You know, you really have to have a target sometimes to find what you're looking for. Yeah. The other thing I've been looking for here in Calgary, because again, by their narrative, cowboys and Indians and chuck wagons and stagecoaches and all that, right? The same narrative that we hear about the Wild West in the U.S., yeah. you know, in Oklahoma and, 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 and all that, and the Wild West and gunfights, the exact same shit went on here in Calgary. That's the mm -hmm. narrative, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, okay, well, there must have been, at some point, Calgary gets pretty big, you know, uh, 10,000 and then 30,000 people. And this is still in the teens, you know, right just before World War I. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, well, there's had to have been a stagecoach manufacturing company, uh, a yeah. horse, a horse drawn carriage manufacturing company, yeah. uh, uh, a wooden cart <laughs> construction yeah. company. And I've been digging and digging and digging and can't find. I find lots of saddle makers. So, okay, yeah. okay, that fits the narrative for them cowboys and Indians is yep. the saddle makers. Sure. Yep. Yep. Tons of those in Calgary going back yep. to the 1870s. Okay. But nothing that I found so far on any companies in a city as big as, you know, you're looking in 1917, uh, you know, 50,000 people at that point. Yeah. And, uh, or sorry, 1914, 50,000 people. But yeah. I can't find any companies amongst all these big, huge sandstone buildings downtown that are five floors big and big red yeah. brick buildings that take up half a city block. Nothing yeah. that's a company that built horse-drawn carriages or horse-drawn carts or buggies or nothing. Like they never exist or came all in on train. The explanation would be they were all carted in on train, right? Yeah, they brought them in from Ontario or Montreal because I found yeah. companies in Ontario and Montreal that built horse-drawn carriages and buggies and shit. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, well, that... See, now that that's another thing is they're force feeding us this whole cowboy Wild West narrative for Calgary. Yeah. But there's there was no place here that built stage coaches or horse drawn buggies. That get, what? Yeah. Where it should be the hub and there should be. Yeah. That's interesting. Because Calgary's always been bigger than Edmonton, even though Edmonton's our capital. Yeah. Even in the fledgling days, Calgary's yeah. always been at least twice the size of Edmonton. That's interesting. And. Edmonton, I've done, I've done a dive on as well, and it has a lot of old world activity going on there too. Yeah, it yeah. does. You know, I lived there for a couple of years pre-awakening, unfortunately. But yeah. when I close my eyes, in hindsight, I can still visualize a lot of the buildings that even before I was sort of opened my eyes to this stuff, I always found old stuff interesting. Yeah, old trains, old cars, old cameras, old books. And old buildings. I've always admired, even since I was a kid, old buildings. So I wow. remember the legislature grounds in Edmonton. That the legislature uh, building in Edmonton, that's a mud flutter. Yeah. And there's lots of old world buildings in Edmonton. The Hotel McDonald and yeah. I've got a good one of uh of Edmonton. I'll see if I can dig it up and if I find it, we should throw I'll throw it up here. Yeah, absolutely. The legislative building. So that's the government building, the main government building yes. there, right? Yeah, that's the provincial capital building. Yeah. 
yeah. Yeah, that, that place is beautiful. And I lived three blocks away from that place. So when I used to want to go to White Avenue, which is kind of the main cool, trendy place to hang out in, that's on the south side of the river, and I lived on the north side of the river. Yeah, well, and I could have yeah. taken a I could have taken a bus or whatever, but I was like, bah, in the summer, it's nice. I'll walk. And it was about a half an hour walk. And I used to cut through the legislature grounds, take a shortcut through there, walk yeah. right past that beautiful rural building. And then I would take the high level bridge on foot across the river to the to the other side of the river and, yeah. uh, you know, hang out there like the cool restaurants and stuff. Yeah, White Ave is kind of known for. Uh... That's what that's what I have in my mind of going to Edmonton is that, you know, the cool street to go downtown. Yeah, out there. yeah, yeah. Jasper Avenue is pretty cool too. Jasper Avenue, yeah, yeah. So here's here's this. Oh, this Calgary. Yeah, there you go. It's home sweet home. <laughs> Are you serious? With the conical like, domes, with this come little on. tack on top, and this is this is ridiculous. And those buildings are all still here, by the way. So, really? Some of them, it's just the facade, and they've had to tear down the guts on the inside and they build a modern building but they've at least thankfully left the facade with all the old world stone and arches and stuff and because cool. it was declared a historical historical site right that whole street yeah is a historical site so they've they've preserved it a bit there's jasper avenue in edmonton that's a beautiful look at that building uh-huh I think that's uh -huh. sandstone. It must be sandstone. It looks like sandstone. Yeah, you can see the texturing on it a little bit. Yeah, it's yeah. barely. Uh, and look Giant at flagpole with no flag on it. <laughs> yeah, or some Across buggy. The street. Across the street, wheels. there's three flagpoles with no flags well, on them. Very wide streets as well. That always, always room for me the. Too. Yeah, very wide. Like why? Yeah, it's like they. So you mean to tell me that they planned to eventually put trolleys and then eventually two foresight like. Two, like four lanes of traffic going up and down there. There's no way. They had that's magical think, foresight, right? That's why I think that the the trolley tracks or the streetcar, whatever you want to call them, tracks were already there. And they uh -huh. just, when they were cleaning up the dirt roads, they uh -huh. uncovered the tracks, which uh -huh. explains why the streets are so wide and these dusty 1880s photos, right? Yeah, I, I think what we're looking at is not... Uh... Uh, the, the mud is a layering on top of the old brick cobble and uh, and tracks that were are underneath, yeah. and you could see it in a lot of photos. It's yeah. it's a layer on top, right? Yes. So that's what I think we're looking at. Look at that. Yeah, beautiful. There's that's right. Is that the same? Yeah, Jasper Avenue. Jasper yeah. Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> like they the have tractor. an old Turkish bath there on Jasper Avenue. The what? building's still there, I think. Huh. Old that's Turkish style bath. Yeah. Uh, see if I can find like the a bathhouse or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. So like, and the kind of, this really surprised me actually that Edmonton had all this because it's closer to home, um, and Calgary surprised me as well because you just, you, again, you you think just in the same way we think Europe, old world, North America we think East Coast, old world. Right? That's right. So when yeah. you stretch it out to the west, there's that's the legislative building, isn't it? Is that yes. That's right? Now, Remember just them. look at the crazy picture there for a second and look what it says on the top. Old Hudson's Bay Post Here. and Parliament Building. Back there. So you've got the Hudson's Bay. Again, what this country is supposed to have been built on the backs of was the Hudson's Bay Trading Company. Uh -huh. So some wooden two-story, almost Not built very cabin well. looking building. See how, it's, see how it's like up, down, up, down, up, down. Yeah. And then terrible. in the background, look at that glorious dome with the cupola on top old almost world like building this is superimposed this yeah. is almost the covered up it's like two photos so they're trying to tell us my friend that yeah. it's the same people built both buildings <laughs> and roughly in the same time period maybe western the hudson's junk. bay is a little older maybe <laughs> yeah it's it's western junk that's the that's the bag of goods they're selling us right western junk See, that it's hiding in plain sight right there. They're telling us right there. This is yeah, junk. They are. They have to tell us. I, th I think that's part of it, too. Is but look at that beautiful building. Unbelievable. Have you been in that building at all? I, have, I haven't been in it, but I've been all around it because I admired it. Even Like I said, even before I sort of woke up to this this mud flood uh, yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, I always just thought it was a beautiful building. Yeah. I'm trying and to a lot of people one. in Edmonton do. A lot of people that work in the office buildings around there, because it's real close to downtown, uh -huh. they'll take their lunch break in the summer. They'll just sit there and eat their lunch, and then they'll go back to the office. Uh huh. 
Because it's Cause quiet it's, and there's birds and there's energy. beautiful trees. That, that, that sort of ties in with the whole energy of the old buildings too. Well, like that too. Kid, yeah, right? it's, it, it radiates a beauty. It makes you feel good to look at it and to be in its presence because it's just so gorgeous. And here we have similar to what we talked about with in, 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 in your neck of the woods, that elevated lawn type deal going on here. Yeah, a retaining wall for some Little dumb reason. Short wall and then the sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting for sure. That There's house, you get the all conical these... dome. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. And portals in it too. Yeah. That's just that's just my house. Uh, just, my name's Jim. I just live here. It's just how they built back then. They you know, that's I always get that's just how they yeah, it is. <laughs> but yeah, do the math. Yeah. Right. How yeah. long did it take some fe fella to build that house? <laughs> and at some point did they must have said, Maybe we shouldn't have gone with the dome up there, hun. It's kind of bleeding our pocketbook dry and it's taken forever. <laughs> Right? <laughs> you know, did we really need that detail, hun? You know. Well, and the narrative on that would be that's the mayor, or that was one of yes. the bankers, or, or yeah. a wealthy merchant, yeah, or a wealthy landowner or developer. So he had this yeah. nice big brick house, and he, of course, then he had to have that big conical dome with the big tech on the top of it, and yeah. all kinds of, you know, uh, arched windows and all kinds of beautiful stuff going on. Here you have the stairs going up to the main level too, which you see quite often. Bit of a yeah. mud flood action. That's a know. nice looking building for a hospital because people that are dying, they want a really extravagant looking building. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you don't want to put your money into the actual care of the patients. No, you want to put your money into fanciness along the roof yeah. and all They're, of the beautiful inlays with the brick above the windows. Yeah, I'm sure if people we had that are in there be... for with you know Spanish flu or tuberculosis, that's yeah. that's their priority is the beauty of the building. Just throw up a hospital. Yeah. Right, when he's not object. There's an older one of it too. I have yeah. the mud flood one up here. Here, this is the one I was looking for. Yeah, there you go. I'm Feeling gonna... very after, like this is this is here, been here. Yeah. Yeah. These little trees, you know, like it's mudded. It's and... it's mudded, and then those trees now, after the mud flood, those trees are maybe five, ten years old, so they've had a chance yeah. to sprout up from yeah. the older trees. They're not very old. Washed yeah. away from the mud flood. That's right. So it's quite recent. Quite recent. Yeah, they haven't fully excavated that building yet. No, that's what it's it looks like to me. The stairs at the front there look all shitty. Yeah, they look kind of covered still here, right? Like it's yeah. not steps. It looks yeah. like the other side that's sort of to your right there, they're using that as the main entrance, and they yeah. haven't worked on the side entrance yeah. yet. Yeah. Interesting. I like this one. This one sort of jumped out at me in the past. Yeah. yeah. Looking and very then, old, too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Here's another hospital. These are all hospitals in Edmonton. This is the one we saw. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Looking very old. Sorry. I jumped to the next photo. But yeah, it feel like it feels like it's been in that spot. Let me go back to it. Where is it? It feels like it's been sitting there, honestly, in my mind, hundreds of years. Like, that looks well, like I wonder when that photo was taken. Yeah, do I have I don't have a date on it. And is, and is this actually here or is that just that's a pretty flat flagged either it's going to be way out here or it's going to be down to not uh, like i think these are just penciled into a lot of the flags it might be it might be yeah. but the i union was gonna jack. say that the photo is old enough for the flag is the union jack mm -hmm. on a canadian building yeah so, so the they, they photos, may have hung it, yeah. so the photo is going to be pre-world war one for the, okay. the photo because it's Union Jack flag. Yeah, I would so put it let's, in the first let's, decade. Let's say it was taken. Let's even just be generous and say that photo was taken in 1920. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah. a hundred year old photo. Yeah. And already the building looks old for that time when it was taken a hundred years ago. It already looks really old. Uh huh. And I think the narrative on that building is it was built in the 1890s. 1880s, 1890s. Like uh -huh. It's the capital building for the province. But we didn't become a province till I think, 1910. So it was just the building for the territory because Alberta was known as part of the Northwest Territories still at that point. Mm. Like Alberta, Saskatchewan, the Northwest Territories themselves. Mm. I think Northern British Columbia... And parts of northern Montana were known as the Northwest Territories. Interesting. And that's left over from the old Louisiana Purchase. Ah. 
because parts of southern Alberta were part of the old Louisiana territory. Hmm. So, but uh, either way, that that building already looks old in a hundred year old photo. Sure does. And so it's course, not like they threw that up forty years ago in you know eighteen eighty and took the picture in nineteen twenty. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it looks uh, way older than that. And how far down does it go? Like you see here, like you know, you know, it's going, it's going down somewhere. Oh, for you know, sure. A decent yeah, amount. Yeah. And then, so this, so again, with excavation, you always have to backfill. That's what gets me too, right? It's like you have to backfill the situation and then t tamp it all down is what we do in modern day to get everything compacted properly. How are they doing that? That's a question I have as well. And then, uh, um, the sidewalks, when I see a lot of these old buildings, the sidewalks are already in place and everything, and they're all dated. The, so so a lot of times I see a building that will be dated to, say, like 1911, the photograph, yes. mm -hmm. and that's that, that's also considered the date it was completed, the, the year it was completed, which I think is an error in their dating system because they're not accounting for all the work around the building to bring it back to something that looks presentable. Um, that's around right. A lot, of, a lot of times I'll find a photo that the building has a date on it that says 1911, and they say the photo was taken in 1911. Yes. I think they're but, just going back to the the furthest back photo evidence they have and saying that's the date. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's part of part of my theory anyway. Right. And then they have U of A there, right? University of Alberta, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I suspect has got a lot of well, the universities are riddled with the old world buildings. Oh, absolutely. Look at all the stuff on the top of that thing. Yeah, bobules and doodads. Those are those urn shaped. Uh huh. Where it looks yeah. like it's. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Urn. It's yes. got a lid with a little ball on the top. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. A little Crazy. circular window action going on yeah, there. Yeah, the portals. Yeah. <laughs> Why with not? The cool. pattern inside. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's really interesting. Yeah. It's. They was spared no expense on the construction of these buildings. If if we're going by the official narrative, right? They're just and let's not forget, you know, um, in the twenties, Edmonton had like maybe fifteen thousand people, maybe twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's always been roughly half the size of Calgary, mm -hmm. and Calgary in like nineteen fifteen had fifty thousand people, so Edmonton would have say thirty thousand. So even just to propose a building such as this in our modern day with all the equipment and technology we have in a town that size would be yeah, absurd. Ba based on just, again, uh, grain farming, uh, ranching, uh, depending on when this photo was taken by the car, it's kind of looks like mid to late twenties. So by yeah. then oil, a bit of oil in and around Edmonton already at that point, mm -hmm. but it's certainly not a huge metropolis of a city yet. You know? No. Let's see. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Here, there's another. One. No, and so th this just doesn't make sense. To the infrastructure that's in place, and then the the size of the. Here's supposedly a construction photo. Is it? The whole sky is wiped out. Why wouldn't you just wipe out the top of the building too? Yeah, it's just white. it looks. It looks. The, the far right edge of the building in that uh -huh. photo uh -huh. really jumps out at me. It looks like, it's, like that line is airbrushed. Kind of hinky. Uh -huh. Yeah, or just scrape. And then the question they, is, they why? They scrape the negative with a blade. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. And the question is, a lot is of times why? what they would do is they would have it on a glass plate negative and then they would they could literally just take a razor blade and scrape around huh. and then they could use that glass plate neg negative to print the photograph interesting and the, they'll say a lot of times you know if you call out a photo as being vanilla skied or, or photo man manipulated or scraped they'll say well if you know if, if it's for a fancy looking building and a lot of times they want to make it into a postcard and colorize it so they mm. want to get rid of all the surrounding buildings and distractions in the background because they're trying to highlight the building mm -hmm. and it's like That's well okay that i could see sure but mm -hmm. then but then it's well then it's a slippery slope and it's it's not much of a leap to say well then it's really easy for them to scrape off portions of the building itself not just yeah. the surrounding stuff yeah. and then say oh well 
you know, like let's say they scrape off the top floor or they scrape off part of the dome. And then they say, well, there it is. It's under construction. Mm -hmm. You never see any dudes walking around up there mm -hmm. with with sledgehammers or hammers or, or you know, guys carrying loads of stone or brick or, or attaching yeah. metal beams. You just see the beams maybe and you see it look like it's under construction. You might see the, an odd hoist or something. But you don't yeah, the, see it. It doesn't look like, like a bustling construction site. No, the and I always find the scaffolding is weak, very weak. Like it looks flimsy whenever they try to give you a construction photo. Like yeah, it's if, almost like you had to be a daredevil uh, to be a construction <laughs> that, worker. That's exactly right. That's you hit the like nail. Like I know on the head. we have we have strict health and safe occupational health and safety laws in today's modern society. Sure. Yeah. But that's not to say that back then, you know that. You know, a, a foreman on a construction site was asking his workers to risk their lives. I mean, that's cost prohibitive if you own a, yeah. a construction company. What are you going to do? Just get another guy who lives down the street who's just another a skilled? skilled worker? Yeah. <laughs> Expendable, right? And actually, that is a, a general attitude that has been passed down that a lot of these workers, a lot of trades, and that's part of what gets my you know gets my hair up there's a lot of tradesmen have been viewed as expendable stupid whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. right but looking at this these buildings i'm like that's not what i'm seeing i'm seeing some serious seriously skilled work here we ha and we have to i'd like to know who is involved in the building of these buildings that's really the crux of why i do what i do it's like yeah. i want to know who built these generally speaking you have sort of a U shape when it comes to a structure like this. At the very beginning, you have you're at the top of the left hand of the curve of the U, right? The letter uh -huh. U, yeah. and that's high, highly skilled. And that's the the architects, the yeah. the engineers, the planners, the designers, uh, uh, and then also all of the manufacturing of all of the the raw materials like which the, takes time which takes a lot pre, of time yeah the pre-cut and hewn stone and the uh -huh. prefabricated uh iron the, girders and steel beams and yada yada terracotta yada. part yeah and then as you progress through the construction you move down the u so when you get to the bottom which is sort of midway through the construction phase yeah. that's the lowest skill point of the skill set that's the guys digging the foundation the uh -huh. guys that are uh, uh, driving the 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 cart with the team of horses pulling out the the loads of dirt, the yeah. guys bringing in the bricks and the two by fours and the beams and yeah. you know just the general labor guys. Uh -huh. And then once moving. that's over with, and you're started getting into the actual erecting walls and building stone walls or brick walls and yeah. and, and putting all that up. Now you start ascending up the the other side of the U back up to the top again where the skill. To the the finish, skill set right? is raised again to the finishing of the building. Yes, you get all the details and the intricacy. Or yeah, uh, at this point, if there's electricity, uh, you've wired it at the beginning, and now you're coming back in and you're putting in all the fancy light fixtures, chandeliers, mm -hmm. uh, all of that stuff, all of the fine, the fine, uh, you know, the fancy schmancy. Which typically stuff. takes longer than the build itself. A lot of the, especially if you're finishing, like like, well, like stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's ridiculous, right? These are the, some of the capital buildings here, but like the the level. This is a Woolworth building in in New York, right? Yeah, like it's did, a department store for all intents and purposes. Like, did you need to? Did you need to do that to the ceiling? Was like, that, thanks right? for doing it. It's beautiful. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for yeah. doing that. But it's, so, it's a place so where more. I buy pants. <laughs> totally. totally. Yeah, I go in there so. to buy pants. I'm going <laughs> to buy my trousers at the Woolworths, but they better have some intricately detailed, elaborate mosaic tile work on the ceiling or I'm out of here. <laughs> I'll, take my, I'll take my business elsewhere. <laughs> Fantastic. It's, that's perfect. I'll take my business to the J.C. Penny, daggummit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's the other one? The uh, I was looking at it the other day. Um, oh, I can't remember. Was it J.C. Penn? No. What is what Macy's, is the small Macy's. fields? Fields? Oh, fields. Marshall yeah. Fields. Marshalls Marshall Field. and Fields. Yeah. In Chicago, Chicago was the birthplace of a lot, a lot of the, that type of stuff, right? Like Chicago's an interesting city. Yeah. Yeah, it seemed in a lot of ways Chicago was really ahead of its time, and I think that's why a lot of people suspect that it's on the old world maps it's 
what's marked as Chilaga, uh -huh. you know, an ancient old world city civilization. And uh -huh. that's why, you know, the Chicago World's Fair and all of the scrutinization with that uh -huh. and all the canals in the city and all of the viaducts where they raised up like uh -huh. major portions of the city. So it has yeah. like an underground city to it. And Elevated trains as well there. Yeah, like, but all done really early on, even by their narrative, done in yeah. like the 1880s, 1890s, early 1900s. Uh -huh. Like, it's like stuff that they were doing stuff even by the narrative in chicago like two decades before other big cities mm -hmm. in a lot of ways you know mm -hmm. and again with the the intricate details most especially in a lot of those old world buildings in chicago yeah you know? yeah i should pull up a, a little bit of chicago like i've i've hit chicago pretty hard before and it's uh I mean, you could you could do a hundred videos on Chicago. It's uh, oh easily, and I've probably right. watched a hundred videos on yeah, Chicago. Yeah, and, and yeah. You know what? It was the uh, World's Fair that got me really hooked me into yes. this research. Yeah, me too. Initially, that was my that was my initial dipping my toe in the water with the whole Chicago thing was the World's Fair. Yeah, like how can you not? Right? When once you see it, you can't unsee that. Once you yeah. get past the lath and plaster story. I was like, like, there's no way it was all lath and plaster. It's just, it doesn't make sense. And, and then, then I make the argument, even if it was just lath and plaster, it's unbelievable. It's spectacular. It would still right. take almost as long to build from what I've seen from videos that were actual, uh, like construction workers. Yeah. Like experts in construction. That the, And they even they said, like, look, it would take roughly the same amount of time to build it out of shiplath and plaster than it would if they just built it out of actual stone masonry. Like if it yeah. actually are brick and stone and so and the argument doesn't hold water, granite does and all that stuff and limestone yeah. and all that. Yeah. It doesn't hold any water at all. Really the argument. Well, and the whole thing too, is that, okay, even if you figure every single building was built to be temporary, okay, fine. There's yeah. still the canals, the ponds. Yeah. And that was all like paved. And, and retaining walls built all around to fill in those ponds. They had like those mechanical boats on the ponds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They had uh, like countless fountains. So everything had to be plumbed and pressurized. All the electricity yeah. had to be put in. You yeah. had to have everything like bathrooms and restaurants. Yeah. And, and like, like, the, like the toilets weren't made out of plaster. The yeah, sinks weren't be. made out of plaster. The yeah. tables and chairs in these restaurants where people were sitting and eating that, that you know, housed like thousands of people in yeah. some of these restaurants in the World's Fairs. I mean, the maybe the, sure, okay, you want to say the building was temporary, sure. But you can't cook on a temporary stove and the sinks to wash up and to prepare the food and, and to wash up the dishes. <laughs> All of that yeah. still has to be brought in, assembled, hooked up to everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I feel like it's a, a real mistake in the narrative. It feels like it's, I think it's one of the key triggers in opening up to the old world and the deception that they've sort of hoisted upon us. Right. It's uh, uh, even, uh, I think steam shovels were around when they say the world's fair was built in Chicago. Yeah. I think they already had steam shovels at that point, but mm -hmm. even with that, mm -hmm. Like you'd have to bring in every steam shovel from the entire eastern seaboard and around every city from the Great Lakes region. Uh, and you know, I think like that you'd it, have to phone up every mayor of every, like the mayor yeah. of St. Louis. Hey, can I borrow every steam shovel you got? Yeah. And you'd have to phone Philadelphia. Hey, can I borrow all your steam shovels in Boston? All your steam shovels. And then, and if you look at the narrative of those cities at the same time, the same thing's going on. Like well, buildings. Yeah, St. St. Louis had a World's Fair. Oh, that and they yeah, were building Louisiana buildings purchase. all at the same time. Yeah. Incredible. And, Omaha and, had a one too. Omaha is unbelievable. World's Fair. Seattle had one. Like, it's yeah, it's it's, it's amazing. So I wanted to talk if, about this style though. This oh, this yeah. reminds me of that Calgary street scene we just looked at. This yes. style, yeah, right. This is this is the kind of style that jumps out at me the most. It's really heavy stone type construction. Really heavy. Yeah, like, like big, like, roughly right? hewn blocks. I think these are old. I I think these are are quite old. These types of buildings. Uh, now, where's this style. building? This is Chicago. Chicago? It is, yeah. Now, I have heard, and I haven't found evidence ev evidence of it here in Calgary yet because I haven't found a sandstone building or a building that that one looks like it's 
like the sandstone buildings in Calgary. I haven't found yeah. one that where the sandstone is degenerated enough to reveal red brick behind yes, it. I've, yes. But I've, I've heard anything. that potentially behind the stone masonry, it's actually red brick is yeah. one thing that I've heard potentially could be I possible. think uh, I think I found some evidence of that is I think it was the Erie Savings and Loan building in Buffalo. I found a video of the demolition and I could see the red brick in behind it. So I think that there is something to that. Um, nevertheless, though, like so what are we looking at? Some sort of sandstone or whatever um, veneer, like a geopolymer? Or no, no, they at... would still be stones, but they might not be uh, not let's say from from the face of the stone that we see uh, yeah might not recess back like a foot as far it might as it only might be next. it might only be you know like four inches thick yeah and I then it's mortared onto the existing red brick surface and then yeah. they're mortared together as if they are huge blocks of stone but which is also quite slivers a of blocks of stone but yeah. that in itself is still a lot of work yeah. It's a lot of work, and, and to stand the test of time, it's it's quite a feat, right? Like, and wh and whether of... whatever whether that building is made out of those large hewn stones, or whether that is just a, you know, a four inch thick, almost a yeah. facade stone, it's still a hewn stone, and it still has to be applied. Is that still tons and tons of man hours and tons of money? Exactly. Yeah. And, Even and if they you... were covering up an old world brick building, and the Victorians did it. Um, yeah. it's it's still cost prohibitive like why would you do that the only yeah. reason i can think of is to cover up the existing structure so that they can come up with a new narrative that's the only yeah. thing i can think of. sure yeah no i hear you and that's yeah. so they can say oh no we built it in you know 1870 whatever instead of it actually who knows how long it's been there hundreds of yeah. years potentially yeah exactly just to distort our narrative right this is a train station too there's so many of these it's like, yeah, why? why do you need so many floors for a train station? And why yeah. do you have to have all that fancy? Like, people on the street level can't even see that from the What's street this guy level. Doing? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, why? So even if you he... actually stood in front of the building and craned your neck and looked up and stopped mm -hmm. and actually tried to see it, you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't, you wouldn't see wouldn't be able three to see quarters it. of that You're stuff. You're right. Yeah. So, what, what are we looking at? What material is this? That's is this probably a... that prefabricated uh okay. like concrete or like a mold a, yeah they pour it into a mold and then it's like a, i mean these are crazy and it's and again a lot of them stand the test of time like the they statues have those... might be solid statues it's like a rebar wow. skeleton statue and then it's a concrete statue but it's still there. pretty heavy to get up there who, who the heck is doing that too right like well that's the thing is that eventually we had cranes but initially it was hoists yeah yeah but they did have those giant human hamster wheel cranes and those things were really effective though we always forget about those it seems oh yeah, <laughs> yeah get, it's a, called the roman crane i think and it's okay. like basically a big huge hamster wheel and you yeah. get two dudes inside it and they run on that wheel and that's what yeah. operates the crane and if you get enough pulleys and counterbalances involved with that you know, like two dudes can lift up several tons i feel like you're pulling my leg no Wow, I've never heard of that. Wow. Yeah. I think they're That's called Roman cranes. Uh, don't quote me on it, but I just so call them the mechanical cranes. advantage. Yeah. Sort of okay to lift things yeah. in the air. Well, well, I it, would like to see a photo of those it, then. Right? Uh, I've, I've seen video of those things being used. Have you? That's yeah. interesting. Ah. Cool. I can't remember where I saw it though. It was on one of the big channels that Shows lots of different stuff, you know, like John Levi, he'll kind of show a, a plethora of stuff depending yeah. on what his topic is. Yeah. Or or even uh, Martin Litka over at like, yeah. Flat yeah. Earth British. And I like that. him too. I'm a big fan of his work. Yeah. Or even UAP, like Douglas over at UAP. Like it just whatever strikes their fancy for a topic. Yeah. It was a channel like that that I saw a little, of the little video clip of one of those being used in, uh, it was somewhere in Europe in the, 20s 1920s or 1930s maybe oh, yeah. building like a big big huge you know like a 20 floor building huh. yeah and i was like wow yeah. okay That's that explains how they got a lot of those big heavy beams up there ah. interesting you don't see as much of uh you don't see a lot of visual evidence for that because i've never never come across that that's interesting 
Yeah. Look at the size of the tower on that thing. I know, right? Why? Well, that's got that's there's got to be something to that whole theory of like a wind catcher and then a sort of an air exchange system. Mm. Because mm. I mean, sure, you, you know, you build a big tower, you throw a clock on it. Yeah, it looks nice, and everybody all around knows what time it is, even though everybody had pocket watches or wristwatches. But okay, whatever. Because yeah. you could buy a cheap wristwatch out of five and dime in the in the teens, no problem. Yeah, it's not like it would cost you weeks' wages. Yeah, to buy a to buy a cheap wristwatch out of five and dime. They had cheap crap back then too that the average person could buy. So yeah. I don't know why you need all these clocks, but okay. Say well, you need the clock, but look at that freaking giant tower. Yeah. What does it lend to the narrative of them setting even our time schedule up? The way that we think of as time work, the work day, the school day, um, the work week, you know, like even even if you boil it right down to the very basics of uh, of setting, creating a new narrative for us and then breaking down the structure of the way that we break down our lives and then, you know, putting clocks everywhere to remind us what time it is sure. yeah work, yeah you know? the, I, there's definitely something to that possible uh, no. but the other thing too though is that there are buildings that we know the photos were taken in you know the 1870s or 1860s and we see the very similar to the one you're showing right now a big huge tower with a big huge clock on it so everybody can follow the you know the constraints of our time that are being imposed upon us but uh, during those time periods in the 1880s there there wasn't you know your standardized 40-hour work week i mean like little kids were still working in factories and people yeah. worked you know seven days a week and uh they, the didn't, good work old days, from, they right? didn't work from nine to five yeah they worked from <laughs> six until six yeah maybe six days a week and they'd go to church on sunday maybe and, yeah. you know, and it was kids working in factories and elderly people and one armed yeah. people and like you name it. So yeah. it wasn't, I don't think, necessarily as standardized back then. Hmm. Um, so I think the they're clocks, attempting to cement it, maybe. I think later on clocks were put in to cement the OK, now that we've rolled in, you know, standardized, you know, 40 hour work weeks like Henry Ford yeah. did in the 20s and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. then, then that's when they say, OK, that's what these clocks are for. Well, that's it I helps often... to drive the narrative. But I think that at some point they put the clocks in what used to be those round portals with maybe the uh, somatic pattern windows in them or sure. something instead. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And then the uh, you know the controllers came in and popped out that stuff. They said, no, 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 we can't have that. And then yeah. we'll throw a clock in there instead. Yeah. Right. And then later on, what's the excuse for the clock? Well, it, you know, it's just so that everybody's on the same time schedule and standardized, yada yada. I have seen. So I think it's Toronto. kind of incremental baby steps of the sure. brainwashing. Yeah. You know? I've seen the Toronto. I think it might be City Hall with that round. What you what may have been a window, but it's empty. And I, I suspect they're putting a, uh, um, they're putting a clock in there or something like that. But I've seen the photos of it where mm -hmm. there's nothing there, like it's been the window's been taken out, but they haven't replaced it yet with whatever they're putting in. So right, that's definitely right. something that I'm sure that was going on. But see, I, like I like a tower like that one where it's all yeah, fancy is... and there's no clock on it. I think yeah. those openings there, depending, Here? right? Yeah, depending on yeah. what the designation is on that. Uh -huh. you know, if it, they wanted to designate it as a church, then that's where your bell goes. Uh -huh. If they designate it as, I don't know, your town hall or your state building, well, uh -huh. then, you know, they just put some louvered shutters over it and leave it, leave it at that. But uh -huh. I think that, again, these are part of maybe some kind of air exchange system where you bring in fresh air from these tall towers uh -huh. and just from the change in the pressure and the, the air circulating around pushes out the quote-unquote stale air from the building like everybody being in there and exhaling and you know what i mean like you know when yeah. you're in a plane sure. for like a four-hour flight yeah i feel like you're breathing in every other <laughs> every jackass yeah. coughing two aisles behind you and so stuff. they had technology to to circulate the air sure sure they yeah i think so built into the way that they they built right so whether it was those little round portal style windows or whether it was these sort of tall sort of cavity I so I don't windows. doubt that everything had a function. A form and form and function were intertwined. There was no separation really between form and function. In yeah, the way that yeah. I think they worked in tandem with each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Really beautiful, isn't it? These buildings. Look at that. It's ridiculous. Owings building. What does that even mean? Right. Why <laughs> Owings? It's funny when you, when you dig. Sometimes I'll do that. I'm do I'm doing a city, and then I see a building like this, so I'll just dig on the on the building itself, right? And then yeah. Get really. Just to get really the story shoddy stories. It. Yeah, and the stories are like three sentences, and you find it on Wikipedia, and you find it on the local history page, and you find it somewhere else, and that's it. That's it. Like this, just there's a little explanation. That's all you need. Right. <laughs> that's funny. Like, look so let me uh, let me ask you something. When we were chatting earlier too, you had mentioned that uh, you know um, you kind of sometimes will put pictures of buildings like this as your you know background des desktop photo on your computer. Yeah, or maybe yeah. you'll show friends and family old buildings like this to kind of maybe try to warm them up to the idea. But then uh -huh. once you start mentioning stuff like mud flood or catastrophe and the buried windows and stuff. A lot of them are like, that's when they kind of, oh, okay, that's where I'm gone. I'm gone. Or that's where you lost me kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So well, how do you find ahead. that? Because are there some people like friends and family members that are kind of warm up to it or open to it? And then others are completely dismissive. The reason yeah. I ask is because I have some people in my family that are definitely open to the idea. Like my dad who uh -huh. has a 35 plus year, uh, experience in the construction, residential construction, more, uh -huh. more, more specifically. Yeah. Um, he's very much um, open to the idea that there was some kind of mud flood because he looks at these low windows, even whether they're like half buried or whether they're just really low. And he's like, look, as a builder, you just don't do that. Especially yeah. here in North America where we get a lot of snow and we get a lot of freezing, thawing, freezing, thawing. It's yeah. ridiculous to have those quote unquote basement windows only yeah. three or four inches above the 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 ground level you know where you, your front lawn is or whatever he says you know you want it at least a foot off the ground at least not mm -hmm. only to compensate for ice and snow but just moisture and 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 dust and dirt getting in there anyways you know mm -hmm. over time right so, i've definitely got yeah i got people yeah. that are um definitely open to it and into it um mm -hmm. and then i'll use my my parents i guess as an example i've got my my dad who was a bricklayer actually he comes from uh, the uk um uh, been here for 40 ah, 50 years now okay cool yeah so he's really interested in my videos he watches them uh -huh. um, oh cool okay but my mother wants nothing to do with it the scares scares the living daylights out of her <laughs> so so the idea that there we may have been lied to about a hidden past scares her that's exactly it because you have because the cause you're asking people to completely restructure too, their concept of history oh well, sure you have to yeah. throw it all out and start again almost like not quite but it's not an easy thing to do i don't think for and for some people it's very difficult right so well yeah there was um i think the sort of the catalyst for my dad most recently was he and i went on a fishing trip uh, a couple of months ago in the summer and we stopped in this little town along the way, just off the, the main highway, the number two highway that goes north and south between Calgary and Edmonton. Yeah. So we pulled off the highway onto a secondary road, and it's about 20 minutes there to this little town. We stopped to get gas. And as we're cruising through this little town down the main street of this little town, which I think has 2,000 people in it, it's called Didsbury. I'm okay. noticing all these old world, old world buildings with dates on them, like, you know, 1898 to 1910. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, dad, what, what's the deal with this little town? He's like, what? It's Didsbury. So what? I'm like, well, hold on a second, dad. Look at all these three story red brick buildings with a date on it before the railroad came to this town. Huh. And he said, oh. Yeah, okay. I, I kind of get what you're getting at. I said, Dad, you were in construction. How did they get all that brick here if the train didn't come through here yet? Uh -huh. And he kind of said, I don't know. And I said, well, it would have had to have been a horse and cart, right? <coughs> and he said, well, I guess so. And I said, wouldn't that have been a bloody pain in the ass? Even using the, you know, the well-established roads, the stagecoach roads in the 1890s and the early 1900s uh -huh. and up until the teens. But even mm -hmm. still, they're like dirt roads. And this so town you're presenting is, logic. Logic. Yeah. And this town is about 
just over an hour's drive going, you know, 100 kilometers per hour, going like 60 miles an hour, right? It's, yeah. it's about an hour's drive north of Calgary. Okay. So it's not real close. About it, the same from Edmonton then, right? Or a couple hours from Edmonton? What's the difference? It's, What's the... it's, it's about a third of the way to Edmonton from Calgary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so my dad was like, yeah, that's a good point, son. I have no idea how <laughs> these buildings would have been built out of red brick when yeah. there was no red brick factory here. Mm-hmm. And I said, yeah. And I said, look at the, the size of that building. And then my dad started getting into it. And he said, that's nothing. He was familiar with the town, right? So he said, that's nothing. Let me show you the old hotel that was built in 1901. I love it. I love it. Uh, so he takes me to this big, huge old hotel, and I'm hanging out the window as we're driving up and down these streets. And he's trying to drive slow, right, so I can capture it on my phone. Yeah. But he doesn't want to hold up traffic, right? Here yeah. are these a couple of yokels from out of town with me hanging out the passenger side window with my phone, trying to video <laughs> the town, yelling at my dad, look, what flood windows on that, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> So it was hilarious, but the thing was that once my dad kind of warmed up to the idea of, yeah, how did they build this huge hotel that's four floors, red brick, takes up half a city block in Didsbury, built in 1901 or 1903, I think. The railroad came in in 1921, so what the hell's going on? So I find that once in a while, somebody is definitely open to the idea, but Mm -hmm. then my brother... I have a younger brother. He's five years younger. He and yeah. I are roommates even. And he thinks I'm a complete lunatic. Mm-hmm. He thinks I'm a complete nut job. And I'm like, well, can you explain how they built some of these massive buildings in Calgary? Pre-railroad, pre-power tools, pre-steam shovels even. Yeah. And he says, well, there's a lot of hard work. A lot of dudes working hard. They didn't have regular work work hour or work weeks and i said yeah that i know i said but when some of these buildings were built there was only like 1500 people in calgary and he's like yeah well that's plenty of people to build a building like that in three years i'm like dude what men women and children are building the building and nobody's doing anything else but building that building for three years mm-hmm. and he, he just goes ah you're crazy and walks away yeah. right so there's other people out there that aren't even willing to entertain the idea of sitting down and discussing it yeah. So I was just kind of curious as to kind of how you were like in your quote unquote yeah. real life or your personal life. How that well, was. I, I mean, I, I only really discovered this a year and a half ago and I've been uh, mm-hmm. like an alternative um, researcher for 20 years since nine 11. I was, I was not buying the official story of anything. Right. And I just, I just discovered this a year and a half ago. And like how did a, you, like I, how did you quote unquote discover it? Like, how did you, like was uh, sort of was like, what did you, it um, may have been like, on a was stream, it through, like a like it was it like a social YouTube media stream. Clicked on something, or it could be, it could be. A, a, oh, actually, you know what? One of the first ones was, uh, I think it's uh, stolen history. Okay, stolen yeah. Org. Yeah, I, I started getting yeah. into that website, and then mm-hmm. there's a there's a couple of videos they made, and it, like I said, the World's Fair really really kind of yeah. sucked me in on that, and that's how it started for me. But Otherwise, I, I would never. I had never come across anything like that. Didn't know who John Levi was two years ago. Um, any of this stuff, like it's yeah, just, yeah, me neither. So I feel like I feel like there's a veil lifting on this deception. That's part of my angle. It's like for some reason we're able to see it now, whereas in the past it was it was more hidden from our our perception. I think that there was. I don't know some kind of recent. Because that's kind of similar to me, too. I kind of came to it out of the whole truther thing and out of the whole 9-11 thing. Uh And the brutal thing about 9-11 is I have two personal connections with that. Number one, my younger brother and I also have a baby sister. And her birthday is September the 11th. Mine is, too. (laughs) Oh, is it? It So every year she's like, God damn it. You know, it's everything on the news is remember 9-11. And I said, I get it. But look, it's your birthday. We're here to get together as a family to have the cake and the cookout and the barbecue and all that because for you for yeah. your birthday yeah. like yes we we remember that terrible day i said uh-huh. but the focus is to be here with you on your birthday so don't sweat it <laughs> and the other thing is my uncle used to work for a, a trading company in uh, toronto that used to do a lot of business with uh, some of the companies that were uh there are 
their head office was in one of the two main trade towers. So my uncle knew some of the people that died there, like three, three people, I think. Oh, well. Yeah. But yeah. that was kind of my first dipping of my toe in the swimming pool was through that. And then it, you know, that kind of, you know, you explore different rabbit holes and, and, uh, as I mentioned, I was always into really old stuff anyways. Mm -hmm. So it was almost serendipitous that two of my interests sort of trying to come to the truth on a lot of the lies and the narrative that we've been fed through the whole 9-11 thing combined with my love for old world stuff. And uh, it just kind of seemed to fall into place. And... Uh -huh. I think the very first video I saw was a I, memory serves. I think it was a John Levi video mm. and I watched a couple of his, but you know how, when you're watching a video, at least on a PC or a laptop, anyway, the down on the side of the video, there's also other sort of related videos from that content creator, as well as other, yeah. channels that are of yeah. similar subject matter so uh -huh. i just started clicking on the i actually created oh you know you, you just click on watch later so yeah. i just clicked on like 20 videos from all kinds of different channels yeah that had to do with what john was talking about because it really struck me mm -hmm. and uh, uh, when was this the, this was probably uh just over a year ago i would say oh like very probably similar. January or February of last year because I just uploaded my first video like last summer, right? So we're like that, a month was, apart. It could be as far as getting was, into this stuff, we're right around the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So so it's I think the first video that really struck me that John did was about, you know, specifically mud flood. Yeah. And then he was showing a lot of the pictures that a lot of us are familiar with, like the pictures in Russia where you can see where they were doing some work in the streets. So they excavated and they found mm -hmm. a whole other floor with doors and windows. And some of the windows still had glass in them and stuff. Uh -huh. and, and I was like, holy crap. And then I, but what really was the tipping point for me was Caleb at Streets of Tartaria. Uh -huh. His videos started coming up in my recommendations. And those yeah. really kind of hit home for me because he was showing buildings that in a boots on the ground uh, sort of a style of doing it where he was actually going out physically and video videoing these buildings and getting yeah. up close. And he was showing buildings that look like buildings here in Calgary, especially in the older neighborhoods, like the neighborhood I live in some of the other neighboring neighborhoods. Yeah. The buildings looked identical and what he was calling these mud flood windows. And I'm like, I'm seeing that here too, man. Like mm. it's not just in these big cities in the U S or mm. in Europe, uh, you know, yeah it's it's these little towns in the middle of utah that streets of tartary is finding that founded by 80 people and to this day only have 300 people but they have a bunch of these old buildings and they always have a big freemasons lodge or temple mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And i'm like what the hell it's the same thing here yeah. so so it doesn't matter if it's a little town in the middle of nowhere in Utah or Nevada. It doesn't matter if it's some big city in Illinois or in Europe or in Asia. It's It could be Toronto, Montreal, Calgary, Vancouver. So that's when I was just like, I've, I've got to share this with people. I've got to, mm -hmm. I've got to get other Calgarians, other Albertans, other Canadians to at least entertain the idea of exploring this this mud flood theory this well, yeah the, the more the merrier here mud flood but right? catastrophe in general theory right yeah yeah and this whole this whole research this whole area mm -hmm. of research I, so I, I got similar, so excited similar. because i'm like wow like this dude is finding stuff that's like thousands of miles away from me but he's yeah. out he drives out there gets out of his car whips out his phone takes video yeah. and he's like doing it right there in real time and I'm like, I can, that's something I can do easily because there's buildings like that up, down my street. I don't yeah. even have to drive anywhere. Yeah. So I'm like, that's it. I'm doing it. You know, so <laughs> it was, again, it all seemed to kind of come together very serendipitously for a guy. Called you know, to it. Just, yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. 
similar similar to me yeah more mine was more the visuals less boots on the ground but the same i just had to share it i just felt compelled to get it out there and show people what i'm seeing you know well um, and that's the, the other thing that i love about this community is it's it's the channels like yours that show the photographs and find really really beautiful old photographs and the rare stuff jared mm -hmm. boosters does a lot of that we talked uh -huh. about that earlier but then yeah. there's also channels that do boots on the ground stuff like i do yeah. then there's channels that do more of the scientific stuff there's channels that look at like old books and old yeah. maps there's yeah. people that collect old stuff and pull it apart to figure out how it works there's people that dig in their backyards and find like old crap from like the 1800s. It's all that shit. Yeah. I love it because yeah. it's, it's, it's just different nodes of information coming in from all different angles. And it just helps us to, it gives us more tools to dig ourselves out of these layers of lies that we've been fed. That's right. Yeah. We're getting closer, aren't we? But we're by excavating doing this, our closer. own. We're digging out the mud. Mental mud. Like, you know? <laughs> totally. Totally. Everything like micro macro, right? It's, yeah, uh, we're still digging ourselves out of the mud here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. <laughs> That's why it's great to get together with like minded fellows like yourself. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's lots of people with lots of channels that, uh, you know, in their description underneath the video or maybe the in the about in the about yeah. <laughs> section <laughs> of their channel's main page. You know, it mm -hmm. says, you know, I'd love to chat. Feel free to contact me. And they, you know, they give their email and maybe yeah. a couple of different methods of contact. And I think that's great. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm very grateful to, to Stuff Beagle for having me on. That's why I'm very grateful for you coming yeah. on and joining me. Yeah. And uh, there's other channels that I've already put the bug in their ear that, hey, I'd love to have you guys on too. And one of them is Billy Philly. Are you familiar, familiar with his channel? No. Oh, he's got a great channel. He's down there in the... the uh, mostly in the Carolinas. Okay. Um, but it's a Billy Philly, uh, and then there's a number after it. Excuse me here. Let me, I just I can't remember the number. Yeah, I'll give it a sub here if you. Billy Philly twenty two. Uh, you know what? I'll just put the link in the private chat. I'll share it with you. Okay. But it's what's great. Yeah, on the right hand side there you'll see a thing that says private chat yeah where it says comments and stuff do you see that yeah i see yeah. it yeah but yeah the great thing about their channel is they find awesome stuff they have fun doing it and it's a husband and wife team doing it oh yeah 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 and so they're both into it and they both get excited and they both find great stuff awesome so i'm, I'm trying to get i'm trying to get either both of them or or one or the other but preferably both of them to come on to a stream oh uh, we should get a little group one going once we get enough people together we get a bunch of us four three or four of us together and oh i would share. love that yeah I'm, love I'm all over it for sure this has been great actually yeah. yeah i would love to do that yeah for sure and i've put the bug in uh the ear of a few other people too so it's just a matter of kind of getting the ball rolling and working out schedules and of course yeah. it's people from all over you know the four quarters of the earth right yeah. so yeah uh four corners four quarters however you want to put it i've heard both i've had people uh um offer to put me up if i'm ever in the area type thing you know oh that's, that's cool. cool like on my comments <laughs> yeah 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 that's great yeah, yeah if you want to come check out my town you i'll put you up and we can you know, check out you know wherever right yeah, yeah that's cool it's neat yeah 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 there's a lot of people in the community i think that are really friendly and uh have a great um sort of way about them an easy almost good uh -huh. sense of humor a good humored way about them yeah and i think that's important too because this is very heavy subject matter and, and it's very easy to get pissed off about the fact that we've been lied to for generations yeah, yeah. our great grandparents have been lied to for christ's yeah. sake you know so it's it can be very aggravating and, and it, it you know a guy can just get really worked up and get really mad about it yeah. so if you can bring some levity to it i think that's great which, yeah. you know, or some kind of easy laid backness to it. And uh, I think a lot of people in the community are like that. And it makes it really easy to get together you yeah. know, in groups, two, three, four, or five people on a stream and uh -huh. do meetups for realsies too, like I did yeah. yesterday. And I'm going to try to do more of those too, because there's about three or four people that live here at Calgary yeah. that are sort of part of this community. Some have channels, some don't, but 
Yeah. You know, they all, we all interact through comments and emails and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's great to get together with people in your city that are like-minded or in your area. But then also, if you can't do that, then do like you and I are doing. People of like yeah. mind that have similar interests in sort of a specific area of this overall blanket, you know, mud flood Tartaria thing where we can get to know each other and, and talk about this and pick each other's brains because lots of stuff is different depending where you live. But I think more of it is so, so similar. And mm -hmm. we talked about that tonight where it seems like a lot of the narratives are pre-planned and just rubber stamped. Yeah. A lot of the buildings, as we all know, look almost identical. Same names, a lot of them. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it's a real eye opener to actually share this in conversations like this in real time. You know, it's just, it's, mm -hmm. it's awesome. Yeah. I was going to say, make sure you tell Bernie that I'm a fan. I, okay, I, watch him, I will. him and Campbell's chats. I watch them quite often. So yeah. Yeah. It's what that's to me, my, like my favorite and sort of to me, the, you know, the, the, the godfather or the granddaddy of this, this movement or whatever you want to call it is to me is John Levi. I like his yeah. stuff. Yeah, and yeah. I also like his way about him. He's very easygoing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, he doesn't scream and yell and go nuts and get himself yeah. all worked up in a lather. Cause that's not going to solve anything. No. He's very disarming and approachable and calming. And yeah. it, it, to me, it lends itself to being able to sit down and relax and open yourself up to whatever he's going to talk about. And whether yeah. you agree with it or not, it's, it makes you more, relax to at least sit and listen and pay attention and entertain the idea of what he's proposing right uh, yeah i love how he so, starts some of his videos with like and this video is not very good and <laughs> yeah, probably like won't enjoy just, it <laughs> yeah yeah it's, and that's part of the, it's the humor the tongue-in-cheek yeah. humor too it like gets very yeah. Yeah. inviting it, it takes a, a what would in some cases seem to be a monumental almost insurmountable topic and it yeah. chops it at the knees and brings it down to a level where you can kind of approach it with a little bit less anger fear anxiety whatever if you can kind of do it with a little bit of humor you know or just kind of being kind of chill about it right and you just and I think know a he lot cares. of people in our sorry go ahead he, you know he cares about the truth right you can sure. tell like that's his game his aim right yeah, because he's yeah. he's he's his own worst critic. Like you said, he's hard on himself sometimes. And this next video is not very good. <laughs> yeah, there's Chief, and uh, <laughs> he knocked over the camera. Yeah, I love it. it. Yeah, it's it's very soothing. It's like a Sunday morning with my coffee. It's uh, I love I love watching his videos. Yeah, yeah, that's and that's what I like about a lot of the channel. I mean, a lot of the reason why I'll subscribe to the channels that I do and watch the content that I do is, I mean, for the information, for yeah. sure, uh -huh. to, to, you know, somebody to kind of hit me up to something, put me privy to something that I wasn't necessarily already aware of, and, but I like it done with information, but I like it to be done with sort of maybe some humor or just kind of a laid back sort of attitude because, yeah. you know, you don't have to be a, a stick in the mud uh, to, to give, good quality information and good and do good research yeah. and you know i also like a little bit of uh oh i don't know oddity sure. people that people that are eccentric uh-huh you know like let's face it uh for some reason it, it comes across as they come across as just being more approachable and easygoing because you realize huh, they're weird just like i'm weird yeah right yeah. like you know, Martin is weird. And I just, uh, I was know, just thinking of Martin. I you know, just and Martin. Uh, Bernie's weird. And <laughs> Douglas over at UAP is weird. Uh, but we're all weird. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. And I even subscribe to channels that everybody's just like dogpiling on right now, like, you know, Wood Nichols and Awar oh, yeah. and all these guys. Awar, yeah, Be yeah. Because I want to, I want to hear what, what the yeah, I'm sub -tube. supposedly I'm sub -tube. or, or supposed quote unquote opposition has to say too right sure, or, or yeah. whatever yeah you know um yeah you know you got to kind of know what's going on and what's being said all over the place right that that's why that's why stuff beagles you know button heads with some of the melt community i, because, I saw some of that yeah <laughs> you know because he's uh you know he watches their stuff and he's he's he wants to make sure that he's privy to what some people are saying and if uh some of what they're saying is BS. He's, you know, he's kind of taken it upon himself to call them out on it, right? So sure, yeah. 
Oh, that's the uh, mud fossil thing too. Uh, are you familiar with that concept? Uh, People are saying like there's every, you know, they're like old giant bones or um, organisms like like uh, bit, like mountains and oh, like mountain ranges are the skeletal remains. Sure, or something? yeah, or <clears throat> and muscular remains and all that. Kind of, it's mud fossil, I think, is what the, is what that is. Yeah, um, yeah, I've. I had I've some seen people. That. Uh, 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 I don't no, know. it doesn't. It doesn't know. resonate with me either. And I've had a few commenters saying like, I, I, I would love to support your channel, but you really got to learn this guy's stuff on mud fossils. And like, well, I have thanks. watched it, but yeah. it's just for me. I guess, yeah, that's a great term. It just doesn't resonate. Same as the, you know, every Devil's Tower type of mountain is a is a giant tree stump. Yes. I, they sure yeah. as hell look like they are. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, it absolutely. I mean, even. Uh, even Richard Dreyfus in Close Encounters of the Third Kind at first thought it looked like a giant tree stump when he was making it out of a pile of mashed taters, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. but, really? Uh, That's interesting. Huh. You know, Steven Spielberg saying, what is this? This, what is this? It's something. This is something. And if, you know, but uh, huh? that, that narrative just doesn't resonate with me that those no. are giant tree stumps. They could be. Yeah. Maybe they are. I don't know. Yeah. But to yeah. me, it's, it's no. not as resonant or as immediate uh, uh, something that really speaks to me as what I'm seeing in my neighborhood, the mud flood thing, you know, yeah. and of course the old tech, the old trains, that's another yeah. one too, that I'm yeah. just obsessed with, you know? Yeah. So I figure that's enough to keep me busy for the rest of my life. It's sure. local boots on the ground, mud flood investigations, and then, yeah. you know, finding old train stuff on the interwebs. That's, that keeps a guy tied up <laughs> in knots enough as it is. It, for me, it was the only time I took offense to a comment on one of my channels where she was basically, or whoever it was, was trying to uh, steer my, uh, and I, I appreciate input that way, but it was kind of like, if you don't look at this, then I'm not going to look at what you're doing. And for me, it was like, well, that's not kind of, that's not how I operate. Like I, I go with what I'm, what, what flow, what works for me. Right. Yeah. I go with and what I'm, I'm not, sort of. I, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to incorporate incorporate this into what i'm doing because for the sake of somebody who wants me to mm -hmm. if, if it works for me then I'll, I'll put it in there but otherwise no yeah thanks. i've i've had a couple of funny comments too uh yeah <laughs> uh, somebody saying something about you know what about melted buildings and i just said like look okay. i like yeah i've seen evidence on other channels but yeah. i my focus is on the city of calgary and specifically yeah. by the narrative the oldest neighborhoods in calgary yeah and my focus is on what happened here and what I think happened here was a mud flood yeah. because I'm finding evidence of mud flood here in Calgary. That's not to say that there aren't melted structures in other parts of the realm, yeah. but just from what I'm seeing yeah. here with my own eyes and what I can feel and touch and video record. Yeah. It, I'm not seeing melted buildings, yeah. you know, and they got really upset and I'm like, well, that's, I, I'm just not seeing it here, <laughs> but the, yeah. I'm sure it's yep. everywhere. It's, it's just, yeah. I think that the catastrophe uh, manifested itself in different ways, depending where you lived is all. And depending yep. what catastrophe it was at one time period. Yeah. I think melted things happened later on or sorry, yeah. way earlier on. And, and mud flood happened later. Yeah. Mud floods may be more recent, I think, but I mean, I don't know. Who knows? It's really? Right. Right. So, it's, that's all we can do. That's all we can do, right? We're trying to get so, closer I mean, to I, it. I don't dismiss something completely. I'll always kind of entertain the idea. But uh -huh. there's definitely some things that don't resonate with me as strongly as others. Yeah. It's it, it's possible, but not as plausible. Uh -huh. If you catch my, you know, our guy's drift. Yep, exactly. No, I hear you. Yeah. So we've been going on for uh, yeah, two and a half hours here, which is great. Yeah, but crazy. Uh, I don't know. It's it's coming up on midnight for you, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. should probably turn in. Yeah, and you're you're yeah. an hour ahead of me, so you're up. Late. Yeah, it's coming up on one a.m., which is fine. I'm actually on vacation this week, so oh, I don't nice. have to get up early for work tomorrow or anything like that. Oh, well, we have but, the holiday. Uh, yeah, you know, I I got two weeks vacation, right? Because I've only been working where I have been for like four years, so. Oh yeah, I haven't yeah. I haven't put in enough time to get the three or five weeks yet. But anyway, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I decided this year to split my two weeks vacation into two separate weeks. So I took one week in July, and I took the other week in what traditionally around here is known as quote unquote Indian summer. 
you know, September tends to get really, really warm. Mm -hmm. And all this week has been in the mid to high 20s Celsius. Yeah. It's so. been warm here, unseasonably warm here as well. Low to mid 20s here. Oh. That's not bad considering very unseasonal. Yeah, no, that's we. It's very out of the ordinary. Yeah. And your longitude, latitude. I can't remember which it is. Because uh, you're we, you're further north than I am by a long shot. Forty nine. Yeah, we're pretty high up for pretty, yeah. We're forty nine parallel. Forty nine parallel. You're about even with Edmonton. Yep. I that's think right. that's right. So yep. yeah, you're you're sort of central British Columbia is where you. That's are. right. That's right. Without docks in you or anything, but central British <laughs> that's Columbia. No big deal. Yeah. You're pretty much smack dab. In the middle from east to west and also from north to south yeah well east to west for sure north to th north to south you'd think so until you drive north of here and then you find out how much more there is <laughs> you go a oh, couple okay. days north before oh, okay. you hit because looking on a map it looked well yeah maybe two maybe a third of yeah a third of the way up maybe yeah 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 but we're basically a, dr a day's drive to calgary edmonton vancouver um almost equally yeah. yeah, because there's two different highways you can take. You can take one almost due east, which yeah. takes you eventually through Jasper to toward Edmonton, or uh -huh. you can come south and then come through Bam? Rogers Pass. Yeah, yeah, which eventually is Banff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you could go so further nice. south and come in through Crow's Nest Pass. You could through Golden, I think. Is that what you mean? Uh, you would go through. No, Golden would also take you through. Like Revelstoke, Golden, and then through Banff. But if you went further south from that, oh. it would take you through Crow's Nest Pass instead of Rogers Pass, hmm. which is I've never, never done that. That's where I did that live stream about the town of Frank, that where like a quarter of the mountain slid down and buried the town in 1903 or whatever that was. Really? I'll yeah, it was a little out. mining town that just at like I think it was four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, not. I think it was nine, 90 million or 900 million tons of basically like a quarter of a mountain just all of a wow. sudden slipped loose, crumbled, and just buried the town in some cases 30 meters of granite, Is Gran giant granite boulders, some boulders the size of houses and cars. Uh, that's on your channel? I haven't seen that. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. it's Okay. I'll find it. It was a live stream I did, so it's a bit longer, right? Okay. So I'll check it out. In my playlists, it's a live stream. And I, it says, I can't remember the title of it. It's something I know. to do with Frank. It has Frank in the title. I know we were about to wrap it up. I do want to show you. I just, it just came to be one picture, if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind at all. Okay. But uh, let me just share a screen. Because you're on the you're on the topic of um, a slide basically burying a town, yeah. um, and what happened here? Let me just open it up. This is. But anyways, that town of Frank, that's where Crow's Nest passes. So you can come through there, and it brings you up into s really far southern Alberta. Okay. Uh, and then you would come up through. Um, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, Waterton National Park, which is pretty close to the American border. Oh yeah, Waterton. So that'd yeah, be much yeah. much longer drive for you. That mean it'd be, it'd be an extra five six hours on your yeah. drive time. Yeah, but it'd be scenic. You take take the kids and see a bit a bit more of what you usually don't see. So this, so we're talking about. Uh, yeah, so close down, yeah. If you zoom down in here? a little more, Waterton there. Oh, Waterton. <clears> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Waterton has got an old world. You have, have you been down there? I've only seen photos. I've had not had the pleasure yet of being of there. Is a Waterton. there's a there's definitely some old world action going on there. There's an old hotel on Waterton. Yeah, that one right there. Oh wow! Yeah, well, that's like Banff too, right? Like it's yeah. not only the old hotel in Banff, but there's like buildings on the main street in Banff that are so old world. Yeah, and it's like how did they build these out in the middle of the Rocky Mountains? Uh -huh. Like, come on, man! Yeah. Like, look at that beautiful. That's a thing, isn't it? Spectacular. Wouldn't you like to spend a night or two there? Yeah, Wouldn't man. It'd be awesome. Um, <sighs> what I wanted to show you, though. So, what I'm going to show you now, you're, we're close actually to what I was because this is what struck me is. Uh, let me get over here. Moving on over to this highway here, Hope Princeton Highway. Okay, so you're kind of in the Okanagan Valley there. 
That's right. Yeah. Um, there was a big slide in this area. So this used to be on the side of the road on that highway. Wow. That's a, that's a face carved into that stone, man. It looks like it, doesn't it? Oh, I think it does. The lips, yeah. the nose and the yeah. eyes. It looks like the eyelids are closed. Yeah. And they, yes, exactly. That's what I'm seeing too. Like a sleeping face, maybe a bit of a headdress going on here. Maybe. Yeah. It could be indigenous yeah. or, yeah. or, Whatever yeah. you want to call it. Long gone now. So this is oh, this says yeah, okay. the head on scenic Hope Princeton Highway. This looks wow. like maybe the forties or fifties. I've 50s, been on that maybe. highway too, by the way. Have you? Huh. Yeah, well, yeah. Well there was a there was a there was a catastrophic um landslide there in the sixties. Um which re oh. and they rerouted. I suspect that this is long gone now because I can't find any other evidence but this postcard. That car is definitely forties, so yeah. 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 So I just wanted to throw that in because what amazing. you were just saying reminded me of that. So, yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> wow, I've never yeah. heard of that, and I've been there. I've I've been there. A good friend of mine that used to live here in Calgary moved out to Penticton a number of years ago. Yeah, and what I don't have a vehicle. I don't drive anymore. But when I was still I had a vehicle and was driving, uh -huh. I used to go out there every summer on my for part of my summer vacation uh -huh. and go out to visit him. And sometimes I would take the Crow's Nest Pass and take the long way. Sometimes I'd take Rogers Pass. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would take a lot of those side highways because it's just a beautiful drive. Uh -huh. You know, and it doesn't take that long to get from Calgary to Penticton. Mm -hmm. Even if you take your time and take the scenic long route, it's like 14 hours, maybe 16 hours. And that includes stopping for lunch and stopping to take a whiz and stopping to gas up the car and yeah. stopping to take pictures of the scenery and all that too right so uh -huh. so i i did that a number of times so i've been in and around you know the fraser valley the okanagan valley uh -huh. and all through those mountain passes on those highways and secondary highways it's just beautiful it is you, you could spend a lot of time driving through there and seeing seeing the scenery taking it in right it's and again, a, these secluded little mountain towns, mining towns, uh, logging towns, mm -hmm. and we're seeing these same buildings, you know, maybe not huge, expansive, massive, majestic buildings, mm -hmm. but two or three story red brick buildings mm -hmm. built in the late 1800s, early 1900s, mm -hmm. you know, with maybe granite inlay or keystones above the arch windows in like granite or limestone or like yeah. all super fancy for these little tiny mining towns or logging towns. Like you yeah. said, your town is, right? It's a it's a mining town. Yeah, or logging, logging. Or yeah. logging, sorry, logging yeah. town, right? Big time. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it makes you wonder, like, okay, today in our modern conveniences, sure, you might want to build like really robust, sturdy buildings for a larger population. Uh -huh. But like back in the 1880s, 1890s, early 1900s, even if it was a booming town, it couldn't have been more than a couple of thousand people. Oh, yeah. So no. why would you need all the extravagance? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you could build quality buildings, sure, but mm -hmm. it's all the fancy stuff, the little bobules and the little medallions yeah. and statues and cartouches. And yeah. It's like, it's, again, it's beautiful. Thank you for doing that, whoever did it. It's yeah. very visual appealing. So thank yeah. you for doing it. But why, in terms of the narrative, limited yeah. resources, limited man hours, out in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, so short time frames. Do. Yeah, very like short why? building time frames. Yeah, and if they're all busy logging or mining, then who built them? Yeah, who's the builders? Yeah, yeah. Like the guy who opened the mercantile, build the mercantile? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Did right? the preacher build the church? Probably not. Just yeah. saying. Probably all, not. All, all we're saying is that there's more to the story. And and we want the truth i think we, we, That's right. we, we hunger for the truth right i do anyway. speaking of story yeah. uh before we depart for the evening yeah um i was wondering if you wouldn't mind just quickly retouching on earlier before we uh uh were recording uh -huh. you talked about a friend of yours who was drilling and oh, found yeah. something down do you mind just yeah. sharing quickly again that story one last time just for the Sure. Slash listeners, because I find that that's just a, almost a textbook perfect example of everything that not only you and I have talked about here tonight, but yeah. uh, everything that almost everybody in our community talks about all the time. Yeah. Well, he's he uh, 
I think they were, I don't know exactly what they were drilling for. If it had to do with oil or what, I should know, but I don't. He's, uh, he was actually Aboriginal chief of the region. Um, and he's also in my age bracket. I've known him since, since he was young. Okay. He came over one day and told us the story of how um, they were drilling just north of town here, got about 300 feet down and they drilled through a tree. Like or like a like a tree, not a petrified, nothing like that. This was like this was wood. This was a wooden tree. Like it's still wooden, not like you said, not petrified, not no, it was turned just, to mush. Yeah, but a still wooden, still tree wooden trunk. Tree. Yeah, he How said it's about down? three. He said about three hundred. Three hundred <laughs> feet. That's what he said. Yeah, below I don't know. the mud. I don't a, think he was again, making it up. Again, not well. I mean. Let's face it, if anybody's going to know about trees and nature, it's probably going to be a First Nations indigenous person. Let's, yeah. let's face it. Yeah. Especially if they're also attached to, you know, uh, drilling or logging or mining yeah. or anything like that, yeah. too, right? But yeah. uh, I mean, again, we want to reiterate not a boggy, mushy, rotted no. tree or a petrified wood tree, but an no. actual tree. He was clear in that. Wow, like that it, is... just like we would have a tree on the surface. Yeah. That's See, it's neat, there right? There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So if, uh, not only evidence of potentially a mud flood, but that the mud flood would have, have to have been fairly recent. Yeah. Like yeah, within right. the last, let's say, I don't know, let's say from from now to maybe going back to maybe let's say eighteen hundred. Sure. Just to throw a number out there, because yeah. once you start getting into it's been down there for 250 years, 300 years, 400, it's going to rot. Yeah. I mean, if it's mud and it stays wet and boggy, it's going to rot. If yeah. it's dry like it is here, it's eventually, yes, it's going to basically calcify or, or petrify, yeah. what they call petrify or whatever, mineralize itself. Right? Yeah. yeah. And basically I... turn to stone for lack of a better term. Yeah, and well, so and for also, it to still be wood and not mm -hmm. rotted or petrified, it had to have been buried in the mud. I don't know, within two hundred years, say. Not ten thousand. I'll tell you that much. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so there's a hole in this hole in the narrative right there. Yep. Right. I love yeah. that story. That's great. Yeah. That's not great. to mention that all the trees and all those things are like the age of the foliage doesn't go back much further than two hundred years. If you find a two hundred year old tree in our forest, it's an oldie. It's an oldie. Yeah, it's not like uh, when you get to the West Coast, because uh, when you say BC, British Columbia, and Canada, most people will automatically think Vancouver. And you yeah. know, we're near Vancouver. I mean, it's no. pretty far to Vancouver. We're nestled like between you, two mountain ranges, the coastal yeah, and right the Rockies. The Canadian, yeah, you're right in the Rocky Mountains. The plateau there, region, they call it, actually. Yeah. And you're quite north. You're quite northeast of it, of uh, of Vancouver for sure. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. So. So yeah, we're not talking the big redwoods uh, that are in Vancouver that are similar to the ones that are in California. No, nope. no, no. We're just talking about basically at your altitude, mostly ever what's known as evergreen fir. trees, spruce, yeah. pine, fir. yeah, fir trees, like Douglas fir. The old ones are Doug firs around here, actually. The, yeah, the you might have the odd poplar. Oh yeah, they're here. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. willows and stuff, but. The major it's just like here in Alberta on the eastern slopes of the Rockies. Same thing. The overwhelming majority of the trees are needle trees, fir trees, you know, pine, spruce, yada, yep. yada, yada. Yeah. And lots of poplar too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But not old. Not old. That's the thing. No, like, no. A couple no, hundred I, years max. Yeah. That same here in Calgary. The oldest trees, I mean, you could tell how old they are just by how huge the circumference of the tree trunk is and how freaking tall there there's one just three doors down from me this tree's got to be 200 years old at least yeah i mean they had to have built it's like a little apartment building that's on the same lot or the same property they had to have built that apartment building around that tree like they took every care they could mm -hmm. because that tree is so bloody old if they tried to cut it down to build some apartment building in the i think it was built in the 70s yeah oh, the whole neighborhood would have would have lost their minds it's a beautiful <laughs> huge tree yep. but yeah not much not can't be much older than 200 years hmm. yeah not like out east or out in the west coast for sure mm -hmm. out east i think a lot of those trees are really old yeah especially and when then, you get into northern quebec and labrador and stuff yeah and i've been around 800 year old cedars on the coast here in bc so yeah oh yeah wow 
Yeah, they're big trees. Yeah, and that's mostly what when people think of like the the equivalent of the California redwood trees. There, these ours aren't actually redwoods; they're cedars, which are yeah, very similar, similar. but not the same, right? No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, but they're similar. And it's a similar tree. Very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's kind of what I thought, but I wasn't sure. So thanks for mm -hmm. yeah, confirming that one. All right, my friend. I think yeah. that's. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to rush you out of here, but I'm I'm just running out of steam. A guy's no, no, it's fine. So, this has you know, been good. Yeah. This has been good. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I appreciate the conversation. Yeah, me too as well. Uh, definitely. And uh, yeah, keep doing your thing over there at uh, Old World Exploration. Mm -hmm. It's great content. I love it. I Thank love you. It. Like I, I said, it that. just it grabbed me right away when I saw Calgary. And then I'm like, oh, he's done other Canadian cities. And I'm like, oh, he's doing all kinds of cities. Mm -hmm. And then I see these pictures and I'm like, wow, just wow is all I can say. It's fun. And, uh, yeah. and you seem like you're having fun doing it. I am. And, I am, am, I, am. am I nuts or once in a while do you, because you said you're a dad. Once in a while, do you have one of your kids on with you com commentating as well? I had a couple of my kids sit in on a few videos, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> I thought it'd be That's fun. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. They like because... it too. They know. That they'll see stuff and they'll say, oh, oh, old world. That's old world, Dad. Well, I mean, out of the mouths of babes, right? They're not mm -hmm. going to necessarily consciously censor themselves like many of us, quote unquote, grownups feel yeah. that we have to do sometimes, especially on social media, right? So. But I mean, a little kid will just say what they want to say. And I think that's that was pretty awesome. I was pretty sure it was you that I had watched a couple of those. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. That, yeah. That's, yeah, that's pretty cute. That's pretty cool. <laughs> well, you know, you got to, they get them while they're young with the indoctrination. So we got to throw some truth at them while they're young, too, you know? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Give them some balance in their lives. Yep. All right, my friend. Well, thank you once again for joining me tonight. I really, really appreciate it. It was a great Thanks chat. For having thank me. you for your time. And thanks for extending the initial invite that kind of gave me the opportunity to feel free to extend my hand out. So, yeah, we'll do it again. That's great. That's great. Yeah, anytime. I'm looking right forward on. to doing it. Yeah, anytime. We've got our contact info. So, yeah, anytime you want to do it, looking forward to it for sure. All right. Take good care. All right. Have yourself a good night. Take right, care. Night. Thanks yeah. a lot. Cheers. So I think that's going to seal the deal here for me tonight at New West Reset. Once again, I want to thank my new friend over at Old World Exploration. And of course, down in the description, I'll have all the uh, links for his channel. If you're not already, I, I can't imagine that anybody who's familiar with me is not familiar with Old World Exploration. But just in case, go by, show him some support, say howdy, and uh, check out his fat, fantastic content. Again, these pictures are outstanding. It's great stuff. So until the next one, have yourselves a good one. Take care and thanks a lot. Cheers.